I pledge my eternal gratitude to any law nerd who would edit and combine original Emily's live coverage of this trial with sidebars coverage at specific moments. <laughs> that sounds like a doctoral project. Day 17 of trial, May 16th. Good morning. Do we have any preliminary matters before the jury comes out? A couple, Your Honor. I'm not surprised. They've been on a week-long break. The court, what do we got? Good morning. Ms. Vasquez, good morning. Ms. Bredehoff. The first one is an exhibit, 188A. And this is already in evidence. Yes, Your Honor. It needs some redactions. The court, are they... Okay, are they the redactions for 188A? Okay, got it. Rotten born. The next thing, Your Honor, we have a brief that we just filed under seal this morning to keep the identities of the jurors sealed for one year following the verdict. Okay, do you have any objection to that, Mr. Chu? I don't. I don't think so. I remember when they did this, it was like, it was it was an odd timing thing. The court said, I think that would be fine. Actually, I think they would feel comfortable to do that. Mr. Rotten born. Okay, that's what we thought. All right, I'll grant that. Want to read it first? If we could, Your Honor, the court, take a look. I'll put it to the side and maybe this afternoon I'll sign it. Rottenborn, thanks, Your Honor. Mr. Chu, Your Honor, we have two very brief ones. Let me. All right. Um, one relates to the article that dealt with a piece of evidence that Your Honor had excluded because it was submitted late. Okay. So clearly the result of the bench conference was leaked to their PR person who quoted it in an article who sent the article to Lockhart, so you probably haven't had a chance to see it, but clearly it's been leaked. And the court said, you don't know who leaked it, though. Mr. Chu said, we don't know who leaked it. Ms. Vasquez, it was transferred as a photograph, Your Honor. The court, right. Ms. Vasquez, thank uh, that you. The court said, okay. We believe it was planted. Ms. Bredehoff said, we believe it was planted by Mr. Depp's side. I don't remember what article this is about. We believe it was planted by Mr. Depp's side. We think Mr. Waldman leaked or modified it this past weekend. We can look at the, this is important. This is the photo that they say we released. So if you can see there, Your Honor, somebody in this courtroom took a picture of the, yeah, I think that's from Court TV, unfortunately. Ms. Vasquez said, that's the photograph, Your Honor. Ms. Bredehoff, the photograph is, the photograph is the one. The court, yeah, unfortunately, that's from Court TV. Mr. Chu, the photograph was one, Your Honor, excluded. We obviously wouldn't leak something. This is the split lip she had. The court, well, the jury's not supposed to be looking at anything. I really don't know who's doing anything. Mr. Chu, no, we understand. We would hope there would be some kind of the court, well, I can tell you that I wasn't thrilled that both of them made public statements either. <laughs> the PR teams during the break. I was not thrilled about that at all. So that's both sides. So that, I do know, came from their source. So I would appreciate it if we don't do any more public statements in the middle of trial. Correct? Both sides. Bredehoff, right, that was PR. The court said, well, that should still be, Mr. Chu understood, Your Honor. Bredehoff understood, Your Honor. Mr. Chu just cuts off, just cuts it off. Yes, we understand. That was both PR teams. Uh, Mr. Chu, we understand that. The final matter is, Your Honor, has heard about the hasta la muerte knife. The court, the knife, yes. Mr. Chu, we would like to bring it into the courtroom. You know, obviously we need Your Honor's approval to do that because it's a weapon. Okay, for Mr. Chu, just to show um, the court, this is for closing or is it going to be evidence? Mr. Chu, just for cross, just to show the, the court the cross, Mr. Chu, because she's now saying that these alleged abuses occurred earlier than she is changing the story. But the point is, it's all the more probative to show the jury how unlikely it would be that she were actually getting beat to have this knife. The court, all right, so you won't put it into evidence, but you want to bring it in for a demonstrative. They want to show how big the knife is. Because on a photo, you can't really understand how large something is. So he wants to bring in the physical knife. All right, so you won't put it into evidence, but you want to bring it as a demonstrative. Chew, 
We want to bring it in, but we wanted your honor's approval. The court, any objection? That's fine, Bretta Hoff. Let the deputies know. We will. We just wanted to ask you for us. Bretta Hoff, one more thing, your honor. It's about the transcript. I looked at the argument on the motion to strike and the response motion to strike, and Mr. Chu called Amber Heard a serial abuser. That she not only abused Mr. Depp, but others as well, which is a violation of the motion in limine. There's no evidence that's come out on that. The court said, although the jury wasn't here, Ms. Bredehoff, no, 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 the court, okay. Ms. Bredehoff, my point is to say that he did say that, and it's not in evidence yet. Yet. She knows. She knows. I'm going to get the final text because I don't have it. I don't want to interrupt your honor, but I do want to make sure that we don't have that happening in closings. For example, we're not even there yet. Elaine, Mr. Chu, I don't remember whether Mr. Chu, I don't remember whether I said that or not. The court said, I don't know, but the jury wasn't here. Mr. Chu said, if I said that, if that was said, Ms. Bredehoff, correct, the jury was not here. He called her a serial abuser to Mr. Depp and others. Ms. Vasquez, your honor, respectfully, there was evidence already. Dr. Curry testified that she hadn't reviewed her transcripts and Rocky Pennington swears. Rocky Pennington testified that Amber had struck her too. So that is in evidence. Bredehoff, that's not abusive. Um, Mr. Chu, sure it is. So let me get this straight, Elaine. When when Amber hits someone, it's not abusive. But when Johnny Depp slams cabinets, it is abusive. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. Okay. Okay, Elaine. Sure. Ms. Bredehoff, that's not abusive. Mr. Chu, sure it is. The court, right. It doesn't matter. It's a non sequitur, actually. Mr. Chu, violence against women. It certainly is. The court, all right, let's go. Welcome back. Thank you. The court's like, stop it. Stop it. Stop it. We're done. We're done. Mr. Chu and Elaine are just like, wah, wah, wah. <sighs> thank you, Honor. Open court. Are we ready for the jury then? Yes. Bring the jury. We also know that they are going to be taking the morning break around 1030 in the morning. Again, these times are all in Eastern Standard Time. Lunch around 1230, a noon break around 315, and then break at 5 or 530, depending on the day. So we've got an extra hour of court time today. We will see if in that extra hour, I don't know who she's talking to. We will see in that extra hour if we get to um, if we get to cross-examination today or not. So... So the jury is going to be coming in and we are going to resume with direct examination of Amber Heard. I'm going to keep you in July of 2015 and Michelle, I'm going to ask you to bring up Depp Exhibit 390A. It's a recording. You're welcome, Tanya. And I'm going to be asking about from 3 colon 30 to 4 colon 12. I'm going to move the admission, Your Honor. It's another recording between Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd. Okay. There's nobody else in there. Plaintiffs, what number was it? It's plaintiffs. It's uh, 390A. Okay. Any objection to 390A? Um, I'm sorry, Your Honor. Okay. May we approach? Okay. Hey, may we approach? Okay. Your Honor, I have an objection to defense counsel using plaintiff's exhibits. Mm -mm. The court said that's fair game. Indirect examination. That's fair game. Okay, thank you. Yeah, Elaine, no. Or uh, Camille, no. You can't say they can't use our exhibits in direct. Once the exhibits are in, you get to use them. So no, no. That's not going to happen. Um, how do you know that? Um, I was there. Um, they fired him. Objection. Objection. Calls for hearsay. I'll sustain the objection. Okay. okay. She keeps um, talking over. Without telling what the medical... It seems like she's trying to stay calm. Tell what was going on with you and Johnny. Um yeah, his uh, his mental health, for lack of what it looked like, his mental health was just falling apart. Is what it looked like. Objection calls for speculation. I'll sustain, I'll sustain the objection. What did you observe that led you to believe that his mental health was falling apart? Objection, Your Honor. Calls for speculation. Can you say what leading. she observed? No, she can't. I'll sustain the objection as to leading. Next question. What, if anything, did you observe about Mr. Depp's uh, state? He was hallucinating. 
auditory. Objection calls for speculation. I, 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 I'll sustain the objection. Could you please Does. tell the jury exactly what he was doing that led you to believe he was hallucinating? Objection leading. That calls for medical What, if conclusion. anything, was Mr. Depp doing that would have led Ooh, you to believe he was hallucinating? Same S objection. Sustained. Uh, the judge what is so annoying. Please describe what Mr. Depp was saying. In January of 2016. Do you hear the court saying sustained, sustained? Uh, he was talking to people who weren't there, meaning people who were not in the room. He was communicating with people and sounds and voices that weren't there. I know because I was sometimes in the room and sometimes on the phone with him. He hallucinated right in front of me. And this is not a response. Speculation. On... Don't use the word hallucinate. Just describe. Sorry. Oh, my God. Your Honor. Your Honor. Honor. I'll sustain the objection. She can testify to what she observed. Please, thank you, Your Honor. You, please tell oh the what you Your Honor, may we approach? Okay. Yes, please. Because mm -hmm. she's not only leading the witness, but she is now on the stand telling a witness what to say, which is so inappropriate. Ms. Vasquez, objection calls for speculation. Question, don't use the word hallucinate. Sorry, just describe what led you to believe. Your Honor, objection. This is Elaine trying to like bury the objection and like put the answers in, which you can't do. You can't direct your witness like, don't say that word. Just say these words. The court will sustain the objection. Ms. Bredehoff, thank you, Your Honor. Please tell the jury what you observed. Ms. Vasquez, Your Honor, may we approach the court? Okay. Ms. Vasquez, she's coaching the witness and she's testifying. It's so inappropriate. I agree. It was. It was wild. Ms. Bredehoff, she's allowed to. She described. You've missed the point. The point is this is a sidebar about your behavior, Elaine, not about what Amber is testifying to. Ms. Bredehoff, she's allowed to do. She described the court, what she observed. She's talking about your questions. Ms. Bredehoff, I'm sorry I didn't hear that. The court, yeah, just your questions are leading to the answers. I mean, just what she observed, just what she saw. Bredehoff, that's fine, the court. Thank you. Ms. Bredehoff, please tell the jury what you observed. Please tell the jury what you observed. <laughs> Camille did a good job um, saying, can we just go to sidebar? I observed behavior from him that was erratic, it's very unprofessional, and didn't seem connected to the reality that we we're in. Let's see. We have the morning recess. All right. Are we ready? Yes, Your Honor. Your Honor, could we come up? Sure. Mr. Chu, two things. One, they've issued another statement. We'd ask them to withdraw the statement. The court started in the morning saying no more statements from PR. And they are at the morning recess at 1030. And Mr. Chu's like, they've issued another statement, Your Honor. Ms. Bredehoff, I'm not aware of any statements, Your Honor. Mr. Nadelhoff, I have no idea what they're talking about. Mr. Chu, another press statement since your order. Ms. Bredehoff, I'm unaware. Ms. Vasquez, it's in People Magazine. The court just now, Mr. Chu, yeah. Ms. Bredehoff, I have been physically at the podium, Your Honor, since you talked to me. Mr. Nadelhoff, I have no idea what he's talking about. Ms. Vasquez, well, the first thing I did when you admonished us, I contacted our PR. The court, has anyone contacted the PR to tell them that they can't? Ms. Vasquez, yeah, but they retracted. Mr. Nadelhoff, I think we did. The court, this morning, right? Mr. Nadelhoff, did you contact PR and tell them, Ms. Bredehoff, not to issue any statements? Mr. Nadelhoff, this morning? Ms. Bredehoff, yeah. The court this morning, right? Mr. Rottenborn, right after there were statements that were issued from, I understand both sides before your honor ruled. The court, right. I understand, Nadelhoff. And I told him, and he's not done anything since then. There's been no statement. Ms. Vasquez, there's a statement, your honor. I can read it to you. Oh, the fight over PR in this case. These PR, the PR people are just like, what? We're going to do whatever. And the lawyers are like, we didn't know. It's your job to control the team. <sighs> Mr. Nadelhoff, I mean, it may have been that came out after the ruling, but the statement was made whenever what whatever was said, and I don't know what it was, it would have been before you said it. I can show you the email for it. Mr. Chu, we would ask that the statement be retracted since it's after your honor's Mr. Bredehoff, how can you retract a statement? Mr. Nadelhoff, what's that? The court, can you retract a statement? Yes, you can. Mr. Nadelhoff, I can let him know. I can ask him. Sure, Mr. Chu. Also, we had a motion on prior acts of violence. Okay, before the cross. 
Vasquez, before the cross. Mr. Chu, we want to give you an opportunity to review it before cross. All right, I'll review it. All right, thank you. The court, he was just about to go out so he could contact him. Vasquez, yes. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, Let's see. If, uh, Your Honor, if we could, this is Vasquez, have an instruction to the witness. She's not to characterize, quote, so I told my therapist or I told my friend, but I can't tell you what I told them. That's inappropriate. Because, right, Amber started doing this in her testimony. She started saying, oh, I guess I can't tell you what I told them. And, like, commenting on the court's rulings. I told my friend, but I can't tell you what I told them. That's inappropriate. She's characterizing hearsay. And it's a complete contradiction of Ms. Bredehoff. I agree. She's not allowed to say hearsay. But she can tell things and then say what she did as a result. And that's perfectly appropriate. Ms. Vasquez. The problem I have is she's literally looking at the jury saying, well, I can't tell you what I told my therapist, but let me tell you. Ms. Bredehoff. She's able to. Your Honor has ruled that she can. The court. I know that she can, but just to testify, not to characterize things. That's all. Ms. Bredehoff, I think she's doing her best, but I can discuss her testimony with her, but I can't discuss her testimony with her. So, Mr. Chu, she knows exactly what she's doing. Oh. Elaine's like, what, Your Honor? She's doing the best that she can. And Mr. Chu's like, no. The court. Do you want to just tell her real quickly she's not to characterize just what she observed and what she saw? Miss Brennehoff, you didn't either you didn't prep your witness or you prepped your witness to try to skirt the court rules. What what is it? Did you prep your witness or did you prep your witness to try to sidestep the court's rulings? I have questions. Miss Brennehoff, well, I I think she's trying to do that. I mean, I don't know what I'm supposed to tell her, you know? I think, Mr. Chu, she keeps saying, she said it four or five times. She's saying to the jury, well, I can't tell you, but this is what I understand. <clears throat> the court, well, if it happens again, I'll have to admonish her myself. And you don't want the judge admonishing your client in front of the jury. Ms. Bredehoff said, all right, it'll be fine. You don't want your client admonished in front of the jury, Elaine. That's not fine. That's bad. That's real bad. The court, okay, thank you. Mr. Chu, thank you. Ms. Vasquez, thank you. Open court. All right, are we ready for the jury? Continue. So I thought if I could get my friend on the phone to, to prove that this didn't happen, we could move on and talk about the issues this, that we should be talking about. You know, we had our marriage was over and falling apart in front of our eyes. We hadn't seen each other for a month, and his mom had just passed. I couldn't believe he wanted to talk about feces. So I call this friend thinking that we'll take care of it. The friend doesn't answer. That's a good point. I call journey. another friend who is someone else he claimed. I don't know how both people did this, but he was claiming that this person was responsible. So I call that person. And that person is on speakerphone. And tell I say, Tell us who that person is. Io. Io, tell it right. Io, tell it right. Okay. Uh, and then you put him on speakerphone with Johnny. Right in front of Johnny. Okay. And what happened next? I I allowed for an opportunity for Io to say why this is impossible. Objection here it's saying. not offered to prove the truth of the matter is asserted, then Your Honor. Why it's is it relevant? The context that leads to the next acts. Then why Your is Honor, it relevant? It is the offer We're to not prove here. That we're not uh, here uh, about uh, whether I uh, owe. I'll, I'll sustain the, the objection. Bed. Next question. Oh, Sorry. my. Um, Umbridge is yelling at the court. All right. So I always talking. You can't tell us what he said. Okay. Objection, Your Honor. Correct. May we approach? Okay. I, that's appropriate. <laughs> oh, oh. Did you hear that? It sounded like Umbridge pushed the mic out of the way. Ms. Vasquez, objection hearsay. Because again, it's what. She said, Ms. Bredehoff, it's not offered to prove the truth of the matter that's asserted, Your Honor. It's explaining the context that leads to the next acts. We had a week of sidebars talking about context. Fucking hell. It's explaining the context that leads to the next ask, acts. Ms. Uh, 
Ms. Fast says, Your Honor, it's being offered to prove. Ms. Bredehoff, we're not here. We're not here about whether I owe. The court, I'll sustain the objection. Next question. Ms. Bredehoff, all right. All right. So I owe is talking. You can't tell us what he said, okay? Objection, Your Honor, may we approach? This is now, again, Bredehoff testifying and uh, coaching the witness. And I think Elaine sees it as like, how am I supposed to get her to answer properly without telling her what? Sidebar, the court, yes, ma'am, Ms. Vasquez. Now, Ms. Bredehoff is doing what we just, the court said that was an instruction. I don't have a problem with that. That's fine. Ms. Vasquez, thanks, Your Honor. So now the court is saying, okay, take a breath, Camille. She has to tell her witness somehow what she's not allowed to say, because this is a mess. You're approaching because I'm just talking. getting. We, we can't say what he said. What is the <sighs> next thing that happens on your end with Mr. Depp? And they tell him something. Um, and uh, it's he your to what you uh, told picks them. up the, the bottle that I guess he walked in with. Uh, it was a this is Mr. Him. Depp or Jerry? I'm oh, sorry, goodness, Johnny. The okay. leading. And uh, starts. I mean, we couldn't understand what she was the saying. But the leading, stand, the, the the coffee table, starts screaming, uh, and they kind of. I feel them kind of corral him. I'm not making direct eye contact, but I can kind of just sense and feel and sound and hear things smashing as he exits the, the apartment, kind of knocking things off the countertops and uh, breaking things on the way. And I don't think I, we'll see Raquel um, Realize he, you know, he's punching something. I, I assume it was the picture because it, it, it broke right after he walked past it. So who called the police? I, I believe it was I.O. Objection culture I speculation. Your Honor, this is not, you, we have to have the context. We don't here. have to if have the context. The because somebody the called the come. So I think we have Elaine, to Elaine, it's not this again speaking to objection. The truth of the matter asserted, it's just who called the police. Your Honor, the objection is not hearsay. It's the objection speculation. is speculation. Do you know who called the police? Yes, I do now. Okay. I'll sustain the objection. The All right. Question. Did you have Elaine is testifying at this you, point? Were you present when there was a discussion about calling 911? Objection calls for hearsay. I'm asking if she was present. Sustain the objection. Next question. She's asking her to move on. Did you call 911? No. Okay. Did Rocky call 911? Objection calls for speculation. She's not do allowed you know to leave this Rocky much. She's a mess right now. I do know whether she did. And did she? She did not. Okay. She, you um, know because she told you. All right. So, so still foundation. What happens? When did you learn Camille's like, that the police had been called? When they showed up, I would guess. Roughly an hour, I don't, at some point shortly after uh, Johnny and his security guards left. Okay. I think if Io and Rocky don't testify, it's a big and problem for Amber Heard's side. Does this accurately depict the yes. scene portrayed in this picture? And does this accurately depict the scene portrayed in this picture? That's a weird question. There's yes, body cam showing the house right. was fine. And yep. I also there see is. that there is uh, a, a little, what we call metadata item on there. How no. How do you get that on a picture? How Objection. Does that Can you calls just for speculation. Briefly? Objection, Your Honor. Uh, calls for expert testimony. Lack of foundation. You, you approach. Yeah. That calls for expert testimony. Objection, speculation, lack of foundation. It's also compound. If you want to approach, oh, the fucking metadata. Sidebar, lacks foundation speculation. Hearsay, Ms. Bredehoff, it's not a lack of foundation. I'm asking her how it gets on there. She doesn't know. What, Amber, you're telling me Amber Heard's a metadata expert? Where was the, who was the, was the photo taken on a phone? So she's a metadata expert on the iOS operating system? Or was it taken on a camera? Is she a metadata expert on a Canon or a Sony? I'm asking her how it gets there. She doesn't know. She can guess, but she doesn't know how they put it on there. They put it on there at the time they took the picture. The court, she's not here as an expert. She's just here, Ms. Bredehoff, right. It doesn't require expert testimony. It doesn't? 
This is on the next series of photos, Your Honor, and it's on there because they put it on there as the picture was being taken. Who puts it on there as the picture is being taken? The camera? The iOS? Can that be manipulated? Can you change the date? I could put whatever fucking date I want on my Sony camera. And then it would show that the photo was being taken in, you know, 1997. I'm not a metadata expert. Your Honor, and it's on there because they put it on there as the picture was being taken. You have it on your iPhone. Everybody has it on their iPhone. They can press that button and that's part of it. It's not an extra feature. Elaine, you don't understand. You don't understand. Can the date and time be changed? On the, How does the system put it on there? Is it actual metadata? Was it manipulated? Oh my God. Ms. Vasquez, but that's not, that's inaccurate. So the picture is taken. Obviously it's taken without that. After the fact, what you can do is just put on just a little eye icon just to show when the picture was taken. That can be manipulated, of course, Your Honor. And what I suspect they did was took a screenshot of a phone, her iPad, and that has the information bar on the top of the picture. Ms. Bredehoff, so she can testify what she did and they can have an expert in their case. Ms. Vasquez, that's hearsay, Your Honor. Ms. Bredehoff, this is on the pictures, Your Honor. Just because it's on a picture doesn't mean it's not hearsay, Elaine. Ma'am, do you, do you not realize that text on a page or a picture can also be hearsay? Because it can also be a statement. Are, are you thinking it's only words coming out of their mouth? That's hearsay, Your Honor. This is on one of the pictures, Your Honor. Ms. Vasquez, no. <laughs> no. The court, she can testify as to how she put it on the pictures is fine. You can cross-examine on it. We're not going to get into what metadata is or any of that. Ms. Bredehoff, I wasn't going to. I was just trying to explain how it got on there. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Can you please explain how this What's particular over? item on here got onto the pictures? Um, it's a interesting it's a feature that was on um, iPhotos, you know, where, the, where your pictures are stored on your phone. Typically, you just push info. Your Honor, I'm going to move the admission of Defendant 708. Okay. Objection, Your Honor, I would just ask the picture be redacted um, on hearsay grounds. Um, uh, Your Honor, I, I have the metadata. Okay. It is hearsay. Well, okay. Metadata. Okay. Wait, they're approaching again. Oh, so Camille's outfit's really cute today. Metadata is not hearsay, Your Honor. It's not hearsay. It's not an out-of-court statement. It's just like a photo. It's just like a video. That's part, Ms. Vasquez, no. That's the DNA, Ms. Bredehoff. That's not an out-of-court statement. It's not by acoustic. El Elaine, out-of-court statements can be not just verbal. The court, okay, okay yes, ma'am. Ms. Vasquez, it's the DNA of the photograph, batch DNA, which can be manipulated. It is text and it is hearsay. Ms. Bredehoff, it's not an article or statement and we have expert witnesses, Your Honor. Ms. Vasquez, that can testify to it. The court, they can testify to it until we have an expert witness. I'll sustain the objection. Right. Bring the expert in. Yes, I see the chat. Camille seems flabbergasted because all of this is ridiculous to fight over. This doesn't come in until the expert testifies and they got to choose the order of the witness. They could have had the expert testify before Amber heard and then it wouldn't be an issue. But until the expert comes in, it doesn't come in. Now they're back in open court and Bredehoff is making quips to make it seem like something's being hidden from the jury, my opinion. Okay. Yes. Now the jury knows though that they've redacted okay. out information. I would like the record to reflect that this was the photo that was shown to Officer Signs and Officer had no objection. No objection. That, that she, she's that this states the evidence. Hadn't identified him. Now the jury should be entitled to know which photo Your Honor, was shown. We that we yes, approach. Okay. We can approach. She's yeah. now testifying Umbridge is now testifying in court. That is appalling. We would like the record to reflect that is appalling. Ms. Bredehoff, Your Honor, we couldn't put them in at the time. We hadn't identified them. Now the jury should be entitled to know which photo was shown. And now she's arguing in front of the jury. Ms. Vasquez, Your Honor, we asked to approach. The court okay approach. Ms. Vasquez, Your Honor, I, the court, I believe it is in the record 
That's the one we didn't get in within the deposition because Ms. Bredehoff said they hadn't been identified yet. The court said because they hadn't been identified yet. So they were the ones used in deposition. Ms. Bredehoff, yes, and I've got them linked up exactly to the exhibit numbers. The court, I'll allow it, okay? Vasquez, thank you, okay. Um, this is where we're our breaking lunch for recess lunch. at this time. Again, do not do any outside research and do not discuss oh, the case with anybody. My, my. We'll see you in an hour, okay? Thank you. Um, what do we have? Do you want to come somebody sidebar? Um, Ms. Bredehoff, that's all the audios from this morning. The court, thank you. And this is redacted. All right, which one? They're going through exhibits. And your honor, denying the, the metadata on the photos does not constitute hearsay. The court, it wasn't hearsay. Foundation was the main issue. Ms. Bredehoff, I didn't have the opportunity to ask her. The court, no, but the foundation, we're going to get we're going to get through the expert. That's what we said. Okay. Ms. Bredehoff, right. Mr. Rottenborn, this is just an agreed. This is just an agreed order from the motion about the jurors identities. It's, it's not an agreed order, but it's an order signed. Mr. Chu, we agree, but we haven't seen the brief. We just object to some of the characterizations about Mr. Depp, the court. Okay, I understand Mr. Chu, but we agree to the ruling. The court, do you have any objection to them t uh, to me telling them during jury instruction, Mr. Chu, no. Mr. Rottenborn, and that was specifically in our brief. We think those should be done prior to deliberations. The court just said she was going to do it during jury instruction. That's before deliberations were Rottenborn. I was just going to make it part of my incorporating jury instruction. Mr. Chu, we have no objection. The court, fine. Anything else? No. Bring the jury. What are you talking about there, Amber? <laughs> Even though Johnny told me that his guards would say whatever he needed them to say, that they were the same guards who had told me that I would lose my life this way. Here, say. All right, sustain so objection. And, and move to strike. Case, so that's all right. We're fine. Um, We're fine. I'm sorry. Oh, shit. The judge admonishing, the judge must be admonishing Elaine. Ms. Bredehoff, I'm sorry. The court said, you cannot keep commenting on the evidence. Elaine said, I'm sorry, before she even got to the bench. Because Elaine saw the look on the judge's face. And the look on the judge's face must have been fucking death. Because Elaine's like, I'm sorry. You cannot keep commenting on the evidence. Ms. Bredehoff, I'm sorry. The court, please do not do that again. It comes in when it comes in. Do not talk to the jury about that. Bredehoff, okay. The court, okay. Ms. Vasquez, thank you, Your Honor. Open court. Big settlement. I didn't care about the money. I was told if I didn't agree to a number that it could be overturned. That, that this would never odd. actually, it would never get complete. It would never that settle. Objection here it would be that goes against what right, was your testimony. What was your understanding? If I didn't agree to a number, it would be overturned. So I took far less than what they were offering and what I was entitled to. Oh. And, and why did you donate it to charity? Oh. I promised the entirety of it to charity because I was never interested in Johnny's money. And in the divorce, I just wanted my safety. I wanted to move on from my life. I wanted my future. And then he started compromising that, calling me a liar, making it impossible for me to move on. By doing so, so then I wanted the truth. I wanted him to clear my name and to leave me alone. Um, they're saying she donated it still? So why did you donate 3.5 to Children's Hospital and 3.5 to ACLU? What? Well, I pledged the first half or 3.5 to Children's Hospital because I've been working there as a volunteer for well over a decade. Uh, I knew the facility well. I'd worked there with another um, nonprofit is how I got affiliated with them. And I knew they could use the resources. I was familiar with it. And what, what about the ACLU? Uh, and then ACLU, because I was a supporter, because I believed in the work they were doing. I believed that they were doing good work for people who deserved it. Wow. Why they are really acting like she made these donations. Over a period of time as opposed to just a lump sum. Um, two, two reasons. The short of it is because I was receiving the settlement in installments. I was receiving the installments over time. Second of all, so I could get the tax benefit of paying over time. You know, it's my understanding that's how you pay these like large sums. You pay it over time. Did you make any payments towards these donations? I did. Okay. 
uh, approximately how much. Okay. I um, allowed for wow. the first installment, which is $100,000 um, to each that came straight from Johnny in 2016. I followed up with uh, $350,000 uh, uh, that year, um, 2016. Uh, 2018, I did another. Oh, and I also donated $250,000 to Art of Elysium, which is the affiliate I was just speaking about um, that does the work in the children's hospital. It was not going to count towards my overall pledge, but I did that too. And then I did another donation to you each in 2018. Brittany, I don't know why they're not moving to strike. And then Johnny sued me, 2019. And then Johnny sued me. Before we get to that, uh, did anyone make donations yes, to the Children's sold. Hospital? That's exactly or right. ACLU she didn't on donate it because of Johnny. Time period. Yes, Elon also, uh, Elon, who was my boyfriend at the time, uh, had his own charitable contributions that he had that he made. Um, he made five hundred thousand to both in my honor in my name um, in two thousand seventeen, I believe. And have you completely fulfilled your donations to the ACLU and the uh, Children's Hospital? I have not yet. And why not? Because, because Johnny, Johnny sued me for fifty million dollars in March of two thousand nineteen. And I have spent over six million. Objection, Your Honor. Oh, what? Motion in limine. Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh shit! They better move to strike that. That was a motion in limine. But she just dropped that she spent over six million dollars fighting this case. Bitch, you were not allowed to say that on the stand. Oh, Camille is going to be pissed. Ms. Vasquez, objection, Your Honor. This is a motion in limine. Ms. Bredehoff, that part was supposed to come in. Well, we see your plan, Elaine. That part was supposed to come in. <laughs> Elaine was just told moments ago by the court to stop commenting on the evidence. And here we are again with Elaine commenting on the evidence. Also, Amber didn't pay $6 million. Her insurance company did. We've seen all the insurance paperwork. She's lying on the stand. I have spent over $6 million. No, you haven't. That's not your money. You didn't pay it. Amber Heard is straight up on the stand trying to say that she did not pay the $7 million she pledged because she has spent $6 million fighting this lawsuit. That is the insinuation here. But she didn't pay it. Insurance paid it. So you can't leave the insinuation that she paid $6 million and that's why she didn't pay these donations because she didn't spend that money on legal bills, which is why Camille's like, objection. Because it wasn't her money. It was her insurance policy. It's a, it's a lie. It was a pledge. And she's, she's fully comfortable straight up lying on the stand. It's wild to me. And that's why Camille objects immediately. Oh, gosh. So, and we've seen that from all of the insurance litigation. At the time, it was suspected. Now it's known that $6 million is what insurance paid. The more you know. Ms. Bredehoff, that part was supposed to come in. Yeah, I'm sure, Elaine. So now we're at a sidebar. Elaine's like, that was supposed to come in. Ms. Bredehoff, that particular part was supposed to come in and nothing else. That was the ruling. Ms. Vasquez, we moved it. It's filed from me, the court... I don't have it with me. Sorry, we have 
we've had the investiture here. Okay, Ms. Bredehoff, Your Honor, it's on page nine. The court of the order, Ms. Bredehoff of the order. The court, okay, you've got the order. Good, Ms. Bredehoff, yeah. The court, page nine, now the order. Page nine, this is it. There's two different orders. The court, this is the one I signed. Ms. Bredehoff, right. This is signed by you on April 10th. The court, right. Ms. Bredehoff, yeah, it says, if Ms. Heard opens the door as to who's paying her attorney's fees, Mr. Depp must first seek permission from the court outside of the jury for raising the issue on this. And Mr. Musk may be asked about his payment, if any, of attorney's fees. And the court may give appropriate instructions. What we said specifically at the hearing is that we were going to say, and she spent $6 million in attorney's fees. The court, we're not going to be able to. Ms. Bredehoff, Your Honor, I can't hear you. The court, I'm sorry. Ms. Bredehoff, what we said at the hearing is that we're going to say that she spent $6 million on attorney's fees, and this is the rest. All the rest of this is not allowed. The court said, if you're going to say $6 million, then everything is allowed. Ms. Bredehoff, well, it, the court, you've got to go by the hearing. That's not in the order. Ms. Bredehoff, right. But I think then it says they open up the door so they can ask her who's paying. Ms. Vasquez, we haven't even cross-examined her, Your Honor. The court, they haven't opened the door. Ms. Bredehoff, but my understanding. So here's what just happened. The court said that Elaine at all were allowed to get into this if Depp's team opened the door by asking about it. Elaine, you can't get into this unless they open the door for it. And then Elaine's like, but, but. And then Camille goes, we haven't even talked to her yet. We can't have opened the door. So yes, chat, you can't open the door by yourself. She's trying to open the door herself. And you can't, that doesn't work. You can't open the door yourself. The court says they haven't opened the door. Ms. Bredehoff, but my understanding was that we, no, no, no. The question is whether we open the door to the attorney's fees and they can ask certain questions. There's all kind of tears in there, Your Honor. There's the insurance company. There's the reference to the attorneys, et cetera. There's all these other things, but we specifically said we would be asking her that. I'll get the hearing transcript. Ms. Vasquez, I did not hear that question. The court, and now they can ask her. They don't have to approach me now. They can ask her all about the attorney's fees. Ms. Bredehoff, that's fine. They can ask who's paying. The court, who's paying? Insurance, everything? Ms. Vasquez, insurance and Elon Musk. The court, I mean... If you ask the question, that opens the door for them to ask her who's paying all of her attorney's fees. Ms. Bredehoff, okay. The court, okay. Ms. Bredehoff, thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Your Honor. So she sat there and said, I paid $6 million in attorney's fees. When in reality, she paid an insurance premium years prior and has not paid a dime in insurance fee or in attorney's fees because others have paid them. Which is fine, I don't give a shit who pays your attorney's fees. The problem is the insinuation. And the insinuation is that because she paid out of her pocket $6 million in attorney's fees, she couldn't pay the amounts that she pledged to insurance. And that's not the case. It is an improper insinuation. So, because insurance capped it at $6 million and the attorney's fees went way over that. Oh, boy. So going back to that then, could you afford to continue making payments to the ACLU and Children's Hospital? Elaine, no. Elaine, no. Elaine, this is not going to help you. No. What, if any, intention did you have to fulfill your pledges and donations to these organizations? I still fully intend to honor all of my pledges. So Elaine then led her client down this rabbit hole where it can be proved that she is not being truthful. She is leaving an insinuation that she did not make those payments because of this lawsuit, and that's not true. So Elaine dug this hole with her own shovel. 
Um, I want to see what's happening in emotions and lemonade. Oh my God. The judge is going to the fucking binder. Oh, they're going to be so mad. You can't elicit that testimony. So why is this a big deal? This might not be a big deal for the jury, but Amber Heard is getting into testimony, like actually like, pushing testimony out it seems like over the objection and speaking over the objection to get that information into the mind of the jury i've spent over six million dollars and she keeps doing it when there's an objection the witness is supposed to stop talking and wait for a ruling on the objection i saw some comments about the cat is fred back there oh he is Hey, Fred. Fred's curled up and napping. He's he's a ginger kitty. He has a twin brother named George. Yes, nerd. Um, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. I can't. Um, she should be admonished. That's their binder of pre-litigation. And that should be stricken from the record. So going back to that, then, could you afford to continue yes. making payments? All jurors have to agree. Children's Hospital. No. Okay. What, if any, intention do you have to fulfill your pledges and donations to these organizations. What do, what is your intent? Fully intend to honor all of my pledges. I would love for him to stop suing me so I can. What if any deadlines are there on your pledges and donations to the ACLU or the Children's Hospital? There are none. They understand. Okay. Now, they can't do start, anything. It's not a contract. Exhibit four. They'll let I her start Mira. after um, the break, hey, after the launch that break. A lead that role? would be smart. Uh, yes, it is uh, one of the leading, leading roles. It's a oh. female lead opposite Jason Momoa's character of Aquaman. Okay, so you were his mate? Jesus Christ, that's that? so yes, fucking his, awkward. His, um, love interest, the, the female. I was a female. You were his mate? Female. That's so awkward, Elaine. So in December Jesus. of 2018. Romantic Aquaman's interest coming, in the oh, movie? Why did you agree? I'm going to. Um, um, that's going to bite her. Michelle. I'm going to turn to. That's not going to go well. About electronics and. It's not about Johnny. Nobody thought it was and about Johnny, have, except Johnny. Contradicts about, multiple. And you've seen photographs, different and witnesses, audio recordings, and text messages, emails, etc. That's not what, what the witness says. What have you done to cooperate in the authentic uh, authentication uh, of all of these things? Objection, Your Honor. May we approach? Sure. Oh, they're trying to get to the they're trying to get to the metadata. They're trying to get out ahead of the metadata issue. Objection, Your Honor. May we approach the court? Sure. Ms. Bredahoff, I thought you were objecting because I couldn't say authentication. Ms. Vasquez, I don't know where the court, what's the relevance of this at the time, Ms. Bredahoff? Just to show that she had the devices, the court also sustained the objection. If you can pull up defendants exhibit. At least they're getting to the counterclaim. They might get to cross. Your Honor, I'm going this to should be ask- towards the end. It's already in evidence. Uh, Your Honor, if I may approach, if we may approach okay, just no, real quickly. Figure out where your shit is, Elaine. If we do this ahead of time. The court. Okay, 245. It's in evidence as redacted. Ms. Bredahoff, yes, but the one that's in evidence doesn't have the full redaction. It has a tile still in there, and quickly what I'm suggesting is replacing it. The court says, okay. This is Elaine being conscientious, which is nice. Um... Ms. Bredahoff, and it's so that it has it has the tile in it, and this has full redactions. I have a copy of it. The court, what's the difference between this one and the one we have? So the one that's in evidence is not redacted on the title. The court, well, I mean, I can make this A. What's in evidence is in evidence. It doesn't change. But if you want uh, 1246A, Ms. Bredahoff, then I'll just, to move it along, the court, you don't have any objection, Ms. Vasquez? No. The court, so 126, 1246A, Ms. Bredehoff, 1246, 1245. Is 1245 already in evidence? Ms. Bredehoff, this is the redacted. Okay, so 1246. Albeit online, where he could get away with it for some objection time. Objection calls for speculation. I sustain the objection. Right. Uh, and and why, why is this so absurd? <laughs> because Johnny and I lived this. We lived through this. I lived through this, and I narrowly survived it. But I survived it. And, uh, you know, I have... Mountains of evidence, mountains of proof, and yet it 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 wasn't it, it won't be good enough for people who are seeking to make money off of Johnny's success. Objection, Your Honor. Calls for speculation. No, sustain the objection. That's fine. Okay, so I'm going to take you now to 
the damages that you've suffered as a result of these statements by Mr. Waldman on Mr. Depp's behalf. Please tell the jury how you were doing reputation. Objection. That's, that's a legal conclusion. Oh, that's uh, why she cut her off. I'm sorry. We moved to strike counsel's testimony. Yeah. These three statements were made beginning. So it's going April 2020, April 8th. They're going to what ha- was objection, happening in your Honor, career. I object on lack of foundation. So they're going to. She can talk about her reputation. Uh, overruled. All she, well, her perception of her reputation. T- the court, for the record, do you want to give me your full question? Ms. Bredehoff, my question is going to be, please tell the jury how your reputation was doing prior to the statements. The court, okay. Ms. Vasquez, it's the first part of it where she said, the court, that wasn't your question. That question's okay. Ms. Vasquez, the second question is fine. The first one. Ms. Bredehoff, I'm sorry, I didn't even, I'll ask the court, all right. Ms. Vasquez, We'll ask that it be stricken. The court, I'll strike that. Thank you. Open court. The court will strike that question from the record. Disregard your next question. What was your understanding on whose behalf Mr. Wall was ma- was making those statements? That's not at all what just happened at the sidebar. Vasquez's objection, lack of foundation, calls for speculation. The court, if you want our proof, that's not what we just said here. She, you can ask this question. And then she goes and asks a different question. The court's like, nah. If you want to approach again, that's not what we just said. The court, I sustain the objection on that. That's a legal conclusion. That's facts. Ms. Bredehoff, but there wouldn't be, that's the court, just understanding of who did it. I'll sustain the objection all day long, every day. Damn. (laughs) Ms. Bredehoff, that's fine. I have other people who can testify. What? <sighs> Judge A is just like, I will sustain that all day, every day. I said, what you're not going to do is this. Oh my God, the court's losing their mind and we're not even to cross-examination yet. We're not even to cross-examination yet. Judge A is so done. Hey, Your Honor, I'm going to move the admission of Defendant's Exhibit 1258. Any objection? Uh, yes, Your Honor. May we approach? Oh, sure. Yes, let's approach. Yes, Your Honor, may we approach? Yes. I'm just getting the copy that the court has here. What's the objection? Objection is hearsay. The court, okay. I don't know why her contract, the court, why the contract? Ms. Brennerhoff, Your Honor, I have a brief on this. It's not hearsay. Contracts are not hearsay in Virginia. Virginia law is if you have a binding contract, then these are legal obligations. The court said, I would really appreciate these briefs prior to testimony. This should have been done in motions in limine. Ms. Bredehoff, Your Honor, I didn't know if she was going to object. The court, you can just assume there's going to be objections. This is exactly what motions in limine are for. This is what motions in limine are for. Sort it out before. Ms. Bredehoff, excellent point by you. Uh, Oh, my God. (laughs) Touche, Your Honor. Touche. So with legal contracts that have legal consequences, the court, there's legal effect, no relevance to the legal effect here. Ms. Bredehoff, true. <laughs> the court, but there's no, Ms. Bredehoff, these are her documents. It shows how much uh, she was getting paid and that she has options for the Aquaman and the Aquaman too. I really do love that Elaine called it the Aquaman and the Aquaman too. She called it the Aquaman Every single time. And I kind of love it the most. It was really funny. I hated what, if anything, I kind of love that she called it the Aquaman. (laughs) I thought it was hilarious. The court said, but it's not a contract dispute case, right? Where it would have legal effect. They're not arguing how much she's entitled to get paid on Aquaman or what her, her obligations were with regard to the Aquaman. They are arguing how much she was getting paid and trying to use this document as evidence of that. <sighs> the court, Ms. Brennerhoff said, correct, Your Honor, but it's for evidence of damages. The court, well, she can testify to how much she made, but you can't get the contract in. It is hearsay. There is no relevance to its legal effect. 
Ms. Bredehoff, well, I would assert, Your Honor, that the case law says otherwise, but, and the court said, under contract, the law of contracts, you're right. If it was a contract case, I'd be right there with you. That's not where we are. Right. You're not arguing the legal effect of the contract. This is not a case where two sides are arguing fulfilling a contract. She's trying to use it to prove something else. <sighs> Ms. Bredehoff, so I can ask her questions on each of these? The court, you can ask her. Ms. Bredehoff, I'm going to go through them now then. I am. The court, you can discuss how much she made. I'm assuming there's no objection to how much she made for L'Oreal. Ms. Vasquez, no. The court, you can ask how much she made. You just can't get the contracts in. The court, thank you. She is mad at this gallery today. She is not happy with the gallery today. Y'all... We are on to cross after the break. This is a afternoon break, 325. Ms. Bredehoff, may we approach the court? Sure. I just want to raise further on the payment of attorney's fees. Okay. Ms. Bredehoff, I'm reading this. What this says is that if she opens the door, the court right. Ms. Bredehoff, we can ask if Mr. Musk made any payments. It does not mean that their insurance insurance comes in. It will be a basis for a mistrial. I would proffer the court the insurance did not pay that six million. The court, okay, so insurance didn't pay it. It's not the basis for a mistrial because it's not a personal injury case. Ms. Bredehoff, well, I still think it would make it prejudice for the court. Said so the insurance didn't pay for anything. So can we stay away from insurance then, Ms. Vasquez? Well, that's just not true. Insurance did, is paying the cost. The court for her attorney's fees, Ms. Vasquez, yes. Ms. Bredehoff, she paid $6 million before the insurance company. Mr. Chu, they said that's where the five got capped, according to the ACLU, because she was too expensive. So, Ms. Bredehoff, she paid $6 million. They didn't know they had insurance, the court. And it's not just the $6 million. I mean, she said that she can't pay all the money to the ACLU because she's paying attorney's fees. Ms. Bredehoff, no, she said specifically $6 million. She did not say she's paying for attorney's fees. She did say she was paying attorney's fees. No, she said specifically $6 million. She did not say she's paying for attorney's fees. No, I didn't. She can look at the record, Your Honor, but that's not what she said. Ms. Vasquez, that's not true, Your Honor. She actually testified $6 million. Ms. Bredehoff, she did testify to $6 million. The court, correct. Ms. Vasquez, she opened the door. Ms. Bredehoff, no, she didn't open the door for insurance. The insurance didn't pay that $6 million. What, has $12 million been paid? Are we at a total of $12 million? Is that what you're telling me, Elaine? That she paid $6 million on top of what the insurance company paid in attorney's fees. Is that what she is trying to say? Ms. Bredehoff, no, she didn't open the door for insurance. The insurance didn't pay that $6 million. What she opened the door was asking if Mr. Musk paid it for her. That's in the order. Your Honor, I don't think there's any reason we need to raise this today. I would like to be able to get the transcript and research it. The court, Mr. Musk may be asked about his payment, if any, of the attorney's fees, and the court will be instructing the jury. It doesn't say anything about insurance, so I'm not sure if that was, that can go either way. It's either not part of this motion in limine or it was not, it's not detailed here. Ms. Broderhoff, right, so I would like the time to get the transcript, Your Honor, because that's, and I would also like to research it because I do believe that would be a basis for moving for a mistrial. Elaine, your client said it. The court, okay. That insurance company is responsible for this payment. All right, this is what we'll do. You can just ask about Mr. Mux and not the insurance, okay? We'll go that way. Ms. Vasquez, at this time, we may have, at this time, may we have opportunity to review the transcript? The court, you can. We did say at the beginning that I granted it in part as far as the insurance company. So yeah, you can review the transcript. Ms. Vasquez said, I want to first. The court said, okay, we'll bring it. Then we'll bring it up. To, then we'll bring it today and right now that's my ruling did you want me to talk about the other motion miss chu yes your mr chu yes your honor it was i was hoping we could hear that now it won't take very long it's fired under seal so i assume you want to do it to the bench we can do it at the bench i mean 
well, you filed it under seal. I mean, we're happy to do it in open court. Mr. Chief said, we're happy to do it either way. Ms. Vasquez said, just outside the presence of the jury. Mr. Rottenborn said, we'd rather do it here. Mr. Brett, Ms. Bredehoff, Mr. Rottenborn, can you address it? Mr. Rottenborn, is it okay if I address it, Your Honor? That's fine. Mr. Rottenborn, so keeping in mind, we've just had a very brief, Your Honor, I think we get to go first. <laughs> Mr. Chu is not, Mr. Chu is not happy at all. Actually, it's our motion, Your Honor. The court, okay, that's fine. I have read it. What else do you want to add? Your Honor, I think there are four reasons why testimony at trial has opened the door to grant Mr. Depp's motion. One, both parties were accused of violence and both have claimed self-defense. We've seen in exhibits one and two, they're arguing that Elaine opened the door somehow. We've seen that in exhibits one and two. We cited the case of Barnes v. Commonwealth, Your Honor. We see now that it's also, you know, McMahon versus Rounds, which applies in the civil context. Granting motion is also consistent with the court allowing Ms. Hurd's counsel to cross-examine Mr. Depp about Rocky Brooks. Remember, Rocky Brooks is the one who filed a civil assault claim. That's exhibits three and four. And allowing Ellen Barkin to testify about Mr. Depp throwing a bottle at the wall, not directed at anybody. So that's one reason. The second reason is Ms. Hurd's prior reputation that is, before she met Mr. Depp, is clearly relevant. The arrest of uh, Miss Ray in 2009 is two years before she met Mr. Depp. In the relationship, clearly that's relevant here. Mr. Depp's motion in Lemonade as far as prior arrest was granted as to liability, but denied as to reputation because it goes to damages. Your Honor allowed Mr. Depp... Your Honor allowed that Mr. Depp was examined about his allegations. We even heard today about L'Oreal and L'Oreal not re-upping her contract. A lot of reasons. One of the reasons could have been she'd been arrested for domestic violence. There is testimony from the ACLU that they considered all the articles. There were a lot of articles about Ms. Heard being arrested for domestic violence. The ACLU considered that. Their only due diligence was asking Ms. Heard her point of view. Your Honor will remember that Ms. Heard's counsel, Mr. Rottenborn, was allowed to ask Mr. Depp about a stack. There's a stack of articles. A stack of articles about Mr. Depp's reputation other things that could have hurt his reputation other than the op-ed. Your Honor assumes that there are articles, several articles, about uh, Tasha Van Rie or Ray. We should at least be allowed to show her those articles and ask her about those. So this is going to cross-examination of Amber Heard and whether or not the door has been opened to talk about prior acts of violence. Um, number four, Your Honor, Miss Heard self-reported the Tasha incident both to her own psychologist, Dr. Hughes, and to Dr. Curry. Um, those are references exhibits five and six. Finally, your honor denied the motion to eliminate Ms. Heard moved for a motion to eliminate to exclude this. Your honor denied it. The only limitation was, okay, so you're not saying in your opening statement that she's been convicted of assault. I'll just make it a ruling, but we never intended to say she was convicted of the court, which she hasn't been Mr. Chu, because she wasn't convicted the court. Uh-huh. Mr. Chu, that's the only limitation. Number one, the court denied the motion to eliminate. Number two, there are four things that have happened since then. Ms. Heard opened the door by saying, you don't hit a woman. Number two, since that time, we know that she self-reported to her own doctor and our doctor. Number three, we know and we cited that she claimed self-defense once she said, yes, I did throw a vase at Johnny, but that's because I was defending. She opened the door there. And four, since that time, Your Honor has correctly allowed Mr. Chu pumping up the judge. Your Honor has correctly allowed wise judge, say good judge, correctly allowed Ms. Heard to ask Mr. Depp about Rocky Brooks and Ellen Barkin and those articles. We think it's only fair, Your Honor, and appropriate that the law allows these limited questions. Mr. Rottenborn, Your Honor, obviously it's no surprise to Mr. Chu. It's no surprise Mr. Chu is brought up at every hearing. Whether it's about this case or not, he's brought up the Tasha, Tasha Van Ray situation. So I'm not surprised they're trying to do this, but the parties are completely differently situated here for a couple reasons. I want to address the point too, because this is the second time Chu brought, up, brought this up today. He keeps saying she hit Rocky Pennington. They even had their expert, Dr. Curry, mislead the jury on what that testimony said. You'll hear from Rocky Pennington tomorrow. Rocky Pennington said, I hit her first and she hit me back. What, what is going on? That what I need, I don't remember that situation with them going to blows with each other. <sighs> Mr. Chu, she still hit her. The court, are they doing the deposition? Nadal Hoff, not tomorrow. Mr. Chu doesn't mean the court, Mr. Chu. So the court's telling Mr. Chu to pipe down because it's not his turn to talk. They're like, S -s 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 -s. 
Mr. Rottenborn, thank you, Your Honor. But to hear him say that she hit a woman, she hit Rocky Pennington, and to have their expert tell the jury that she hit Rocky and not tell the jury that was after Rocky hit her first. So I just want to, it's very misleading. Well, that's fair. If that's what was said. There are a couple of points, Your Honor. Under 405, uh, this is an essential element of the claim. For Mr. Depp, an essential element of his claim is that he has never abused Amber. That's if you take his defamatory implication, he is advancing this theory of the case, this op-ed, even though it didn't say that, somehow implied that he had abused her, then none of those statements are defamatory if he did abuse Amber. So an essential element of the part of the case is, did he abuse Amber? It's not an essential element for either Mr. Depp's defense or Ms. Hurd's counterclaim, whether Ms. Hurd was ever abusive to Mr. Depp. That's not, the parties are totally differently situated. It's a fair argument. Um, and... Your Honor, excuse me, if I could just finish, Mr. Chu, go ahead. So Mr. Chu, again, was trying to jump into the conversation while Rottenborn was still arguing. Fair enough. Rottenborn, excuse me, I could see him just, excuse me if I could finish. Chu, Rottenborn didn't cut you off. He gets very excited. Mr. Rottenborn, so I didn't need to go through all of that, but the parties are very differently situated with respect to this. Um... Mr. Rottenborn, I'm doing my best. The case that's I cited, the Barnes versus Commonwealth. So this is all being argued at sidebar. So there's LawTube. Um, and their channels will be linked below. This is Law and Lumber. This is DUI Guy. And this is Runkle the Bailey. Uh, I like Runkle's blue suit. Runkle, good to see you, buddy. Um, so how do you get your cat to be so respectful to your work? Oh, I don't. I'm living for his demeanor as much as for Amber's drama in court. I don't. Um, there, there is a gif of me getting hit in the face by his tail in the middle of a stream where I got cat hair stuck in my lip gloss. No, this is not an all the time for George. This is just a how he's feeling today. So um, what is your cat's name? That is George. He has a No, that's Fred. He has a brother, George. So that's Fred back there. Fred has white. George does not. George is all ginger snappy. Rottenborn says, and I know the rule has been extended in certain civil cases. I've not had a chance to look at those since the motion was handled, handed up this afternoon. But that case is in opposite 404. The testimony has to be offered by the accused. So if Mr. Depp witnessed her being violent to someone, then that may be a different story. But he didn't. This is just what they're trying to get in, essentially. Um, what they're trying to get in is essentially hearsay. And they're trying to get it in for reputational purposes. Uh, Ron Bourne says because Mr. Bett and Mr. Judge were the two bodyguards who were present with him and I said I'm not asking him anything else and they didn't attach what they didn't attach is the very next what your honor said you can ask that one question Ron Bourne said so I did I didn't ask two and your honor didn't let me go into the details of the assault Ron Bourne said the whole purpose of that they're trying to get into did she assault Miss Ray I was trying to get into who were the bodyguards who were present. So this motion in their brief that somehow we were able to question Mr. Depp about this is not true. The court said, I understand. Rottenborn said, finally, Your Honor, with respect to reputation, what I was able to question Mr. Depp about, he's claiming he lost Pirate 6 because of the op-ed. I was able to ask him questions about the series. The court said, for damages issues. I understand Rottenborn said, yes, it relates directly to his role. So Rottenborn is much easier to follow, truly. In his arguments. Um, let's see. This is the longest freaking sidebar ever. Ben Chu is saying, Your Honor has already ruled on similar objections. Violence to Mr. Depp is very much an issue in this case. He lost the top of his finger. Very much an issue in this case, whether Miss Heard cut off um whether Miss Heard cut it off or whether she said he did it somehow himself. Um, and Mr. Rottenborn was allowed to ask Mr. Depp about a stack of newspapers or articles related to other issues. This goes to her reputation. Um, the court, you're going to have to find a way to do it without referencing the article, Mr. Chu. Thank you. Got it. Thank you, Your Honor. Ms. Bredehoff, is this going to happen this afternoon? The court, I don't know when it's going to happen, but the ruling stands. Thank you, Your Honor. So let's see. The court, anyways, what I'm saying is the arrest doesn't come in. If you go, you can ever talk about the articles about that came out about the assault, Ms. Vasquez and Mr. Chu about the assault, the court about the assault without getting the articles in. But you can get articles in that talk about the assault, but we're not going to talk about the arrest. Um, I think it's prejudicial, gives a connotation to the jury when she wasn't arrested for anything, okay? 
I don't know what the court means by that. We know what she was arrested for, but I also understand if you're not convicted, the fact of an arrest can be unfairly prejudicial. So the court's like the facts of the thing can come in, but not the arrest. So now we are starting cross-examination. Are the jury's going to be coming back in? Cross-examination. Here we go. It's happening. It's happening. What's the first question, Camille? Bring it. Bring it. Good afternoon, Ms. Hurd. Good afternoon. Starting out respectful. Mr. Depp hasn't looked at you once this entire trial, has he? Ooh. No, he has not. Not that I've noticed, no. You've looked at him, though, many times, haven't you? Yes. Yes, I have. You know exactly why Mr. Depp won't look back at you, don't you? Ooh. I do. Oh? He promised you he would never, you would never see his eyes again. Isn't that true? Ooh. I don't recall if he said that. One of the last times you ever saw Mr. Depp was when you met him in San Francisco in July of 2016, right? That was the second to last time I saw him, yes. And this was after you had publicly accused him of domestic violence. Oh, I got my restraining order before that, yes. Mm -hmm. And this is after you had obtained the domestic violence restraining order against him. That's correct. Let's please play plaintiff's exhibit 1229. Um, for the record, it's at 1101 through 1209. Oh, right into audio. I'm going to ask that it be admitted into evidence. Mm -hmm. Oh, new audio. Get it, Camille. Now, we'll ever see each other again. I'll never see each other again. Don't take my fucking glasses off. You don't like fucking looking at not my fucking eyes? You oh. will not see my eyes again. Audio. You That's will you not see my eyes again. That's you and Mr. Depp in that recording. Again. That is. And this is from when you and Mr. Depp met in San Francisco in July of 2016, right? Yes, that's what it sounds like. That was in the hotel. We met once after that as well. This is after you publicly accused him of domestic abuse. Uh, yes, and got my TRO. Yeah. And he tells you, you will not see my eyes again, doesn't he? Yes. Uh, yes, he does in that recording. And he kept that promise, hasn't he? As far as I know, he cannot look at me. He cannot. He won't look at you, right, Ms. Heard? He can't. He won't. One of the first questions your counsel asked you on direct is, why are you here? Do you remember that? Yeah, I do. Let's please play plaintiff exhibit 357A. Ooh, right in with the audio. The evidence, Your Honor. Oh. And for the record, it's 2122 through 2140. and see what the judge thinks. Tell the world, Johnny. Good. Tell them, Johnny Depp, I am going to death, and I am a victim, too, of domestic violence, and yes. I know it's a fair fight. It's these probably people believe or side with you. They should have gotten ahead of that That's your voice on that recording, right? Yes, it is. I'm surprised they didn't. And you were speaking with Mr. Depp? Yes. And you said to Mr. Depp, quote, you can tell, you can please tell people that it was a fair fight. And see what the jury and the judge think. Tell the world, Johnny. Tell them. Tell them, Johnny Depp. I, I Johnny, Johnny Depp, Depp a, man, a man. A victim, I, too, of domestic violence. End quote. That's what you said, right? I was saying it to the man who beat me up, yes. I thought it was preposterous. And the man you beat up numerous times. Ooh, right, Mr. Depp? I could never hurt Johnny. Oh. You're here in this courtroom because Mr. Depp finally told the world that he is a victim of domestic violence. I know that he is suing me um, and has sued other people or corporations that have said that as well. You didn't think he would tell the world he was a victim of domestic violence, oh, did you? Shit. I found it hard to believe that he could or that he would do that considering the relationship he and I had. I, I thought it would be crazy for him to do so, mm. knowing what I know we lived through. Mm. Or, as you said to him in that recording, who was going to believe that Johnny Depp, yep. a man, is a victim of domestic violence, right? That's with all due respect, I wasn't saying it because he's a man. I was saying it because he's a man who beat me up for five years. Um, Mr. Depp is your victim, isn't he? They're going right in. No, ma'am. And once he left you, you continued to abuse him publicly by calling him an abuser, didn't you? 
he is an abuser and we can look either of us up online and figure out who's being abused online. Let's look at some of that. So there's no medical records reflecting any injuries to your face after he, he hit you several times. I did not need to go to the doctor at the time. Despite hitting you several times, you lost count with rings on, your fi on his fingers. That's correct. I did not seek medical attention. She said Other I didn't my need. Therapist. And then she said I didn't seek. You didn't produce any photographs after that alleged incident, did you? I, I don't know if I took one or if it's included. I'm not, I'm not quite sure which ones. You didn't show any pictures to this jury after describing that alleged incident. No, that she your didn't. Teeth, your lip went into your teeth. You don't remember that. Right? I, you didn't I show don't, any pictures to the jury after describing that incident, question. right? This is gonna get I don't believe I've seen that picture admitted. <laughs> that picture doesn't exist. That's a sidestep. I, I don't know which one you're talking about. There were We have pictures from March 2013. Yes. I don't know what you're talking about. The only picture that you've produced and shown to the jury is the one that was just put up on the screen where you said he hit you multiple times in the face and you appear to have what is a bruise on your arm. Correct? That's right. I believe this is the only picture that's in evidence right now. It, it, it's the only picture you've shown to the story. The sidestepping. This is going to take Correct? very long. I believe so. Yes. I understand you are under an obligation to produce all photographs oh. after any alleged incident. Metadata. Put it on your bingo cards. Everything. Metadata. Metadata. You didn't produce any photographs after the Met Gala. I produced everything. <laughs> no, you didn't. You also oh. understand that you're under an obligation to produce all medical records reflecting any injuries you allegedly sustained from Mr. Depp, correct? That's correct. And you haven't produced any pictures or any medical records reflecting a broken nose after the Met Gala in May of 2014, have you? I have given everything to my lawyers, everything. I've turned over literally everything that I have. Is that your testimony, Ms. Hurd, literally you sought medical treatment after Mr. Depp allegedly broke your nose after the Met Gala? Everything. Not after the Met Gala. I did not seek medical attention, no. She and makeup said, covers up swelling, right? Makeup will not cover up swelling. Ice will, though. Ice will cover Ice will up cover swelling. up swelling? Ice reduces swelling. Normally, the swelling after that kind of injury is not as bad as you would, might imagine. And for me... What? It wasn't oh. that bad. I have a picture of it underneath the makeup. That's how I know how to reference it. Let's see. A picture you haven't produced or shown to this jury, right, Ms. Hurd? I absolutely... I've produced everything. But you haven't shown it to this jury? I would very much like to. It's not my job. It's not my job. Ma'am. It's not, not my bitch. job. Yes. Is she going to blame her lawyers? Um, wait, are they approaching? But you haven't shown this jury. I would very much like to. It's not my job. Ms. Vasquez, Your Honor, may we approach the court? Yes, that's fine. Ms. Vasquez, Your Honor, she's characterizing that she's producing photographs that haven't been... Uh, that haven't been... The court, is this your photograph, Ms. Vasquez? There are photographs that haven't been produced. The court, she said there's a photo. Ms. Vasquez, it wasn't listed in any direct examination. Ms. Bredehoff, first of all, we have a motion to eliminate court ordered and we don't bring up discovery issues without first checking with the court. Second of all, Your Honor, I don't know whether we have a lot of the pictures that came in through the, through the investigation, you know, going into all the devices and Your Honor has ruled we can't put any of them in. I don't know if this is one of those or not. We certainly have been diligent in producing everything we have. But there certainly are injuries that we didn't find earlier that came in through the last device. So I don't know the answer to that. And those prohibited me from introducing a lot. The court, no, I'm asking this question. Is there a picture of her that she just testified that she said there's a picture she gave you guys that has the nose? Ms. Bredehoff, I don't know, Your Honor. I don't know. There's a lot of pictures. Oh boy. The court, I know. But there's but if there's no picture, I have an issue with that. She can't testify that there's a picture if there's no picture. Brad Hobbs like, I don't know, there's a lot of pictures. The court said, I know, but if there's no picture, I have an issue with that. Miss Bredahoff said the answer is I don't know whether she does or not. Oh boy. There are, I mean, there are so many pictures. There's no way for me to just know that. It's your job, Elaine. <sighs> there's, 
there's no way for me to just know that. Miss Vasquez, not for you, but she should be able to know that. The court, okay, I just don't know. I mean, Miss Brodohoff, I mean, there's nothing I can do about it. She can testify. Miss Vasquez, I think she should be prohibited from testifying. Miss Brodohoff, I don't think she can be prohibited. She's asking her questions. The court, right? Ms. Bredahoff, I don't know the answer to those. She's answering whatever she is. I can't be responsible for knowing thousands of pictures. We're talking, the court said, here's the problem. If you're saying that you don't think it exists or you don't know if it exists and it doesn't go to this jury, Ms. Bredahoff said, I can go back tonight and look, Your Honor, but I don't know the answer. The court, I understand that. That's not the problem. She keeps, Ms. Bredahoff, there are thousands of documents. The court, she keeps commenting on the evidence or lack of evidence. I understand she asked the question, there wasn't anything, but the answer is there isn't. But she keeps saying there are pictures. Ms. Bredahoff said, I understand. She's asking her if there are pictures, which is actually a violation of the court order on the motion in limine. The court, that's not a violation of the court order. Oh my God. Elaine is trying to like change the goal, like move the goalpost in the middle of the argument. I hate it when people do this. They're arguing about Hurd's statement in testimony. And then Elaine is like, well, actually, it violates the motion in limine. And the court's like, no, it doesn't. <sighs> the court, that's not a violation of the court order. Ms. Bradhoff, it is. I don't think your honor can prohibit her from testifying that she has them. Well, the fuck she can. She can. <sighs> oh, my God. Ms. Vasquez. That's not what she's saying. The court, she's saying they exist. Ms. Bredahoff, I understand that. And I'm telling you, under oath, I, as an officer of the court, I don't know. There are more than 100,000 of pictures that come out of that. And we had a bunch of them we put into evidence after they went through that process. And your honor ruled they can't come in. So there may well be. The court said, all right. Ms. Bredahoff said, maybe the ones we're not allowed to get in. Ms. Vasquez said, I would like some type of instruction, Your Honor, that she's not to comment on pictures. She's testifying that there are pictures that exist. The court, but you asked the question. Ms. Bredahoff said she opened the door. The court, no, she didn't open the door. Ms. Vasquez, no, they haven't been produced, Your Honor, and that's the problem here. They weren't produced. The court said on time. Ms. Vasquez said they weren't produced on time in the discovery period. The court said right. Ms. Vasquez said, so I don't think she should be allowed to comment on whether or not the pictures exist and whether she turned them over and they're part of this trial. Ms. Bredahoff's like, she asked whether they exist and she now knows they exist because they came through that. She can answer that honestly. You can't prohibit her from responding under oath to a question that was posed to her. You can't prohibit that. So the, the back and forth is Elaine saying, you asked the question and Camille saying, she can't just say that there's pictures that haven't been turned over. The court, this is what we'll do going forward. We'll ask the question. If she says they exist, that kind of opens the door to her talking about discovery issues. Ms. Vasquez said, right. The court said, you didn't turn them over in time. Ms. Vasquez said, correct. The court says, I mean, she can go into that if you want to. You don't even know if these pictures exist. Ms. Vasquez, the other problem I have, Your Honor, is the only picture that Ms. Bredahoff in direct examination tried to bring into evidence was one photograph from 2012. Nothing about so she's commenting on pictures that Ms. Bredahoff said, I intended to put in a lot more, but when your honor ruled I couldn't, the court said, I understand. I think we're going in circles now. You think? Now we're in circles? I've been in circles. But Elaine is trying to say, look, she's allowed to testify. We had a lot of pictures. They got turned over late, but they got turned over, but we weren't allowed to put them in. So how is she allowed to know? You're kind of stuck with her answers now, but you can go further into discovery issues if you want to. I don't know what her response will be. If you need a jury instruction later on, we'll instruct the jury at jury instructions, okay? Ms. Vasquez said, thank you. So the court said, look, man, you asked the question, so you're stuck with what she's giving you. But now you can talk about discovery issues and the fact that stuff wasn't turned over or not. It's not going to work well with Amber Heard because Amber Heard's just, they end up going in circles all day long about it. 
if I was Camille Vasquez, I would absolutely approach and be like, your honor, she says she's turned over these photos. We haven't gotten them in discovery. There's a pending motion for sanctions. We'd sure like to know WTF is happening with these photos that she's saying that she's produced to her lawyers. And her lawyer has got to be saying, um, we don't have those photos. We have turned over everything, but this is time to get into the metadata. So I sure would like to. You haven't shown those pictures to the jury. I sure would like to. Well, her testimony is now I've turned it over, but the defense doesn't have it. Amber Heard might be creating a giant mess for her attorneys. You see, Elaine's like shoulders are like this. She's like, I, I actually in this moment feel really bad for Umbridge because now she's on the stand under oath saying, I've turned it in. I've turned it in. I've turned it over. And you're getting Camille at the bench going, if you've turned it over, then where is it? Where are the photos? There aren't any medical records reflecting that you sought medical treatment for any not of these injuries, words. are there? I did not seek uh, medical treatment after Australia, no. Sir, do you recall giving testimony on day 16th in this trial? Nope. You yes, weren't I did. Out, right? Yes. Have. Well, I guess we're reading back. For the jury. She keeps saying my nose was broken and then she's downplaying when she's crossed on it saying, you said your nose was broken. And she goes, it sure okay. felt like that. Well, right. did you we'll, go to a doctor? We'll get it. Did you fix your nose? Did you not? So now they are doing read back for the court reporter to pull up. Did you testify that you had a broken nose? Because she did. And I think they're going to go through the exaggerated <laughs> injuries and the lack of proof to the injuries, which is a solid strategy. You've complained about all of Thank these injuries. Where is the evidence, the mountains of evidence, the mountains of proof that back up everything that you're alleging? And that, oh, here's your testimony. Here, we have it. We have a copy. Um, her nose does look incredible for so many broken noses. Matt Bond, you would have think she would have needed a doctor, like a plastic surgeon or someone, an ENT, a specialist of some sort, and potentially a dentist. Because if you're getting hit in the face that much, wouldn't you chip your teeth? I chipped my teeth playing water polo. Well. I hate it. Of day 16, 4593, the jury trial's transcript. I thought I probably had a concussion and, and certainly that I had a broken nose. There was a blood everywhere, blood all over the pillows. My head was bleeding from the ripped out hair, chunks of hair on the floor, all over the place. All over actually. the place. That's a lot. So lines of that was day 15 nine. of trial that I had a broken nose. Do you re recall giving that testimony, Ms. Heard? Yes, exactly. So you had a broken nose, right? That's absolutely what I thought. Ah! I two black eyes after this incident, right? I wonder if something happened there because she looked up. I have two black eyes after that incident. Sorry if I scared you. You testified that you also had a busted lip from when Mr. Depp punched you. I scared me. That is uh, correct. From December, yes, that's correct. You testified that the lip wound kept reopening when you moved your mouth. As That's they correct. want to do. You also testified that you had bruising on your temple. That's correct. And bruising on your chin. Correct. You also testified that your head was bleeding from where Mr. Depp ripped chunks of your hair out. I remember, yes. And that you had, quote, gross pussy and quote, bruising around your temple. Maybe we'll ask, we'll ask law too. Uh, in my scalp, yeah. Now for this incident, you did take pictures. That's correct. correct. And we will look at some of those in a minute, but I, don't I first want to talk to you about your appearance on the James Corden show. I feel like I'm spelling sure. pussy. Can I close this? Sure. I feel like I'm spelling pussy incorrectly on my notes, but gross pussy. You don't have any medical records reflecting that you broke your nose during Shots your relationship fired. with Mr. Depp, do you? Uh, I saw an ENT after my relationship ended. How long after? In what, a year you later? E it's your testimony under oath that you saw an ENT for broken noses that you sustained as a result of Mr. Depp? No, but the ENT told me I sustained objection. multiple fractures. No, I'm going to strike. I'll honest. sustain the objection. I'll move, move to, to strike. strike. There we go. Where's so again, the medical records from the ENT? Try my question. There's no medical <laughs> records reflecting that you yes. broke your nose during your relationship with Mr. Depp. Yes. Is there a misheard? I don't know what made it in evidence, but I do know that I documented that um, visit and that everything was given to my attorneys. I don't know Ms. what Heard, made it into evidence. You never evidence. went to see any doctor 
or surgeon to treat a broken nose during, during your relationship, relationship with Mr. Depp? Yes or no? I never sought treatment for broken nose while I was with Johnny. Or after you were with Mr. Depp as a result of any injuries you sustained as a result of Mr. Depp? Afterwards, yes, I did. And you didn't produce those medical records in this case. I'm going to object, Your Honor. She did. Oh. I did. I, I don't know. Oh. Right. They have not been produced, Your Yet Honor. They not only right, if you would <gasps> approach. approach. Ladies, ladies. Ms. Vasquez, they have not been produced, Your Honor. Now they're all just arguing in front of the jury. Not only have they been the produced, the court approach. The court, get here, get here now. Stop fighting in front of the jury and approach. The court, medical records, Ms. Bretterhoff, they absolutely were produced. Ms. Vasquez, no. Ms. Bretterhoff, I can guarantee they were. We'll find them tonight. It's in the record. We didn't admit them because your honor won't let us have any medical records that are hearsay. The court, right. Ms. Bretterhoff, so we can't put them in, which I think opened the door, so we should. The court, I don't know about that. Ms. Vasquez, I have never seen any medical records that she went to see an ENT. Ms. Bredoff, I am 100% certain that I produce them. I guarantee we produce those. Ms. Vasquez, well, she also hasn't tried to introduce them in this case. Ms. Bredoff, because your honor ruled we can't. The court, it doesn't matter to me. I just want to understand. You asked a question. You're stuck with the answer. Let's move on. Vasquez, fine. Everybody's like, fine. So this is going round and round about the medical records. Oh, oh damn. Wait, where's everybody going? Uh, the audience is getting up. Sh this is just getting good. Y'all sit back down. You better have to pee real bad to get up during this. Um, this might be another long sidebar, but now they're arguing in front of the jury over whether medical records from her seeing an ENT after the relationship has been produced. And Camille's like, they haven't been produced. And then you've got Umbridge going, I assure you, they've been produced. And they're going to pull these giant binders out and start going, what is happening? If you are Elaine and your client was treated for a broken nose after repeatedly saying that they were going to testify about a broken nose, it's like your one job to make sure that you turn those over in a timely fashion. Let's look at defendants. Exhibit one zero nine four. This is going to go evidence. with with all this evidence. Why are there no pictures of your injuries? That's where this is building up to. You took this picture of Mr. Depp as well, ah, the didn't you? festival I of did. ice cream. You decided to take a picture of Mr. Depp asleep with ice cream spilled all over him, right? He was nodding off, and um, I was worried about how bad the medications and mask. the medication change and the drug use had, had gotten, where he wouldn't even feel ice cream or a lit cigarette on him, and it scared me. So you really. took a picture of it? Yes, I, um, I wanted him to get help, and... Johnny's surrounded by enablers who clean up after him. Objection, and Your him. Honor. I'm going to move to strike everything after yes, that she took this picture. Not responsive. It's still responsive, Your Honor. The question was, did you take this picture? It's fair. Right. It's not I'll responsive. Sustain the objection and strike everything Honor. after. This isn't a very flattering picture of Mr. Depp, is it? No, it's not. You wouldn't agree that this is, or you would agree with me that yeah, this don't is go an with the embarrassing double negative. scene, right? Ooh. Getting into the embarrassment. Yes, I think it's a part of getting help. Is to embarrass someone? Seeing it. But you sent this picture to one of your friends, didn't you? Uh, I don't recall. Um, if we could please pull up oh. Defendant's Exhibit 252. So this is why they only ask questions so that they can rebut. You'll only be looking at the portion of so this document. Did so you do this? Did you do that? If she says no, but the answer is not right, they want to be able to bring in the exhibit and to say, ease, but you did, though. Gone ahead but and she did, though. It. So they need the receipts, and that's why they only ask yes, questions where they have the receipts. No, that's that correct. there's no question pending. There's no question yet, Ms. Heard. Yeah. So directing your attention, I'm going to move to admit um, exhibit 252A. Any objection? Any objection, Ms. Bredehoff? Could you turn turn on, could you turn on your could mic? Could you turn on your thing? mic, Ms. Bredehoff? Thank you. Uh, I need to see it first because okay. I don't know what they redacted. Two, five, two. Well, that's we redacted fair. the identifiers. And that's fair. And anything that's not misheard. Text messages. That's fair. Consistent with hearsay. We redacted it. Consistent with, you know, the law. Don't look at your colleagues. Just breathe, Camille. You're doing great. You're doing amazing, sweetie. Um, this style of cross is much 
much more effective. It's going to take time, but it is methodically going through each and every aspect of yeah, I mean, we you took punch. this, okay. you took this, you took that. And as, this must be the ice cream. Yes, I think it's part of getting help is looking at it, seeing it. But you sent this picture to one of your friends, didn't you? I don't recall. Miss Vasquez, if we could please pull up defendants. All right. For ease, we've gone ahead and redacted it. Okay. Yes, I was asking for support. That's correct. There's no question yet, Miss Heard. So directing your attention, I'm going to move to admit exhibit 252A. Any objection? Any objection, Miss Bredehoff? Could you turn on your microphone again? I'm sorry. Thank you, Miss Bredehoff. Your mic, Aline. I need to see it first because I don't know what they've redacted. We've redacted the identifiers and anything that's not Miss Heard's messages. Your Honor, may we approach? This is about the ice cream and the text messages of the ice cream. Miss Bredehoff, Your Honor, you may recall that when we were putting our evidence in, they got to look at it and then talk about context. They're trying to suggest here that she's just willy-nilly sending these pictures to embarrass him. <sighs> yes, that's exactly what they're insinuating. That she felt safe enough to do so. That's that's what they're. That's exactly. That's exactly what they're insinuating, Elaine. They're arguing that that's what she did. But the context here is: this is to Rocky Pennington, and she's saying, "Are you guys okay?" And then Amber says, "Barely. I think I knocked on your door when we were at yoga, which is why this is what I've been dealing with." And then sends these pictures. Elaine's trying to get into context. Elaine, you can redirect. So I think in context, I think that has to come in because the context in which she's asking the court, again, context is not an exception to hearsay. And Amber Heard just testified, I was asking for support. She testified as to the context. Amber Heard just testified, the context was, I was asking for support from my friend. That's the context. The court, again, context is not an exception to hearsay. Ms. Brennerhoff, well, Your Honor, well, Your Honor allowed them to be put in documents for context. The question to her is, she's suggesting that she's sending it to her to embarrass him. But in fact, Rocky's asking her and she's coming back and she's saying how she's doing. She says, barely, that's what I've been dealing with. The court, barely is coming in. Ms. Vasquez, right. The court, all that coming in. Ms. Vasquez, right. The court, just which one of you guys, okay, coming home now. I was at yoga, Ms. Bredehoff. And dealing should come in as well. The court, that's all in. Ms. Vasquez, that's all coming in. The only thing we're hoping to have, the court, all Amber's texts are coming in. Correct? Just Miss Pennington. Miss Brunhoff, okay. The court, okay. Miss Brunhoff, okay. So the still fighting is coming in as well. No. The court, barely. I think I knocked on the door when you were at yoga. This is what I've been dealing with. Ms. Bredehoff, but if you go up the page before, this is still Amber. The court, that's not coming in at this point. Ms. Vasquez, it's been redacted. Ms. Bredehoff, still fighting. No. This is their evidence. This is all they want to bring in. Any objection to what they're bringing in? Ms. Bredehoff, yes, Your Honor, because it's not complete. So she is trying to argue rule of completeness. The court, all right, understand, overruled. It comes in. Ms. Bredehoff, Okay. He's all of those things. Of course, he could get upset. Of course, that's scary to me, of course. But it didn't stop you from sending this picture to your friend, did it? Why would it? It was a big moment of testimony. So you sent Miss Pennington this picture of Mr. Depp with ice cream spilled on him, right? That is correct. And you said, and this you is wrote, what I've been dealing quote, with. This is what I've been dealing with, end quote. Did I read that right? You did read that right. That's correct. And this is you protecting Mr. Depp. That is me getting support from my best friend. This is you supporting Mr. Answer. Depp. This is me getting support from my best friend. I also need support. Yep. You weren't afraid the, the monster would vicious. get upset that you took this picture? Yeah. This was um, Opiate Johnny. This is a uh, different... Not a monster? Is Opiate Johnny not a monster? This is Opiate Wait. on the nod Johnny. Is Opiate and Johnny not a monster? you weren't afraid that Opiate Johnny or the monster, as you called him, would get upset that you sent this picture to your friend? Well, he's all of those things. He, of course, you're not answering upset. the question. Of course, that's scary to me. Of course, but didn't stop you from sending this picture to your friend, did it? Why would it? Let that sink in. Why should I be afraid? Mr. Depp's you're not afraid because he didn't right abuse you, correct? In his pocket, right, Miss Heard? Yes. Why would correct. it? Why would I be afraid of him? 
Holy shit. That's a moment. Also showed this jury pictures of cocaine. Do you recall that? Wow. Why yes, would that's it? correct. Let's please take a look at one of those. We could please pull up defendant's exhibit 167A, which is already in evidence. Anyone who's ever been afraid of someone, why would I be afraid is not what's going to happen. And this is why you slowly and methodically pick apart a cross-examination. Directing your attention, Ms. Heard to a photograph. Ooh, ooh, this is a photograph talk about the tampon applicator. March of 2013, right? That oh, is correct. Shit, so shocked. And this was taken at your apartment in Orange? Yes. And this is your breakfast table? That is correct. And that is your driver's license? And it's your testimony that Mr. Depp left this breakfast table just the way you took it. I can't believe that she said correct. that. That is correct. So this is what the table looked like after Mr. Depp had been doing cocaine? Uh, well, clearly he has yet to snort these lines. There are four lines of cocaine on this table, right, Ms. Heard? In this picture, I see four lines. There isn't any cocaine residue around those lines, right? Correct. Uh, I, not that I can tell, no. Doesn't really look like anyone's been doing cocaine off that table, does it? They're getting to whether it's staged. With all due respect, I'm not sure you know how that works. <laughs> I'm asking if you do. You testified you've I'm done cocaine. If you I do. have. Doesn't really look like Mr. Depp response. or anyone was doing cocaine off that table, does it? Uh, I beg to differ with you on that. When you snort cocaine, typically it goes into your nose. Tell me more about it. And then it doesn't stay residue. on the table. There's residue from that cocaine when your lips and nose touch the table, right? Well, the tampon applicator next to um, the credit card, I mean, um, driver's license that you see is the tampon applicator. a device that uh, I believe my sister had taught him to use in order wow. to Wow, this is great testimony. Put the cocaine uh, in your nose. My sister taught Johnny so Depp how to snort cocaine. Smoker, right? My sister he taught is. Johnny Depp how to snort cocaine. And, Was that the testimony the we just got? the ashtray in the back there? Um, back right? Yes, it looks like one of his hand rolls. There's no other cigarettes in that ashtray, are there? I see one cigarette. The one that's not smoked. That's correct. There's no ash in that ashtray either, is there? Staged photo. Uh, not that I can tell in this picture. It's pretty clean. In this picture, it looks like it, yes. It's a pretty neat table. So her sister... Wouldn't you agree? Teaching Johnny um, Depp how to do coke. Depends on what you would call neat, I suppose. And you sent this picture to your friend, Rocky Pennington, as well, didn't you? I sure did. And when you sent it, you said, quote, look at my morning, or something like that. Is that right? Yay for mornings. Hmm. So you have a habit of sending stage photographs to your friend Rocky, don't you? I had a habit stage of communicating photos. with my best friend about what was going on in my life. It's a good cross. You don't have any pictures of Mr. Depp actually consuming cocaine, do you? I don't think I have a picture of him mid-snort. No. You don't oh. even have any pictures of Mr. Depp with cocaine. What do you mean by that? Holding cocaine, standing next to cocaine. Um, sitting next to cocaine. I don't know. I don't know. Well, you haven't shown any of those pictures like that to the jury, have you? I don't know. I No, I haven't. And you were never able to catch Mr. Depp with cocaine on film either. Catch. Were you? I uh, never tried. Interesting way to phrase it. But and you were able response. to catch him sleeping, right? Uh, I have seen him pass out in all sorts of places, yes. She said and then you released no, a statement in which you claimed you would be donating the entire $7 million to charity, right? That's correct. You stated you would be donating half of the $7 million to the ACLU. That's correct. And you would be donating the other half to Children's Hospital of Los Angeles. That is correct. And you also stated, with respect to the $7 million divorce settlement, that money played no role except for the extent that you could donate the money to charity. Yes, that's correct. If we could please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 1259. Yes, please, let's pull it up. 
This is an article entitled Amber Heard Donates Johnny Depp Divorce Settlement to Charity. Read her statement in full. Is that Donates. Correct? That's what the title says, yes. Directing your attention to the Trying portion to on distance. the second page where it says, quote, read the statement below. Is that the statement you released, Ms. Heard? That is correct. Your Honor, I move to admit the statement and the article as redacted. Objection, hearsay. It's her it's statement. Her statement. It, it, this is not her statement. This is some. This she is, just testified, Your Honor, that it's her statement. She just said it was hers. May she I see the full? Just laid uh, the foundation. Everything else is redacted. Um, no, you don't need to see it. She just said it was hers. Okay, then I have no objection. All right. One, two, yeah. five, nine, You're not going to get an objection, redacted. even if you think you have an objection. Because it's her statement, and she just said the statement that reads, was laying a foundation, Elaine. As described in the restraining order and divorce settlement, money played no role for me personally and never has, except to the extent that I could donate it to charity My. and in doing so, hopefully help those less able to defend themselves. As reported in the media, the amount received in the divorce was $7 million, and $7 million is being donated. This is over and above any funds that I have given away I'm glad in the that past we're already here. and will continue to give away in the future. Did I read that correctly? That is correct. I don't remember that last line, but I have no problem with it. It doesn't stand out to me as wrong. There's nothing inaccurate in the statement. Not that I recognize, no. Mr. Depp donated $100,000 of the divorce settlement directly to the ACLU. Is that right? Right at the beginning of the divorce settlement, he um, donated 100000 to each charity on my behalf or towards my contribution. I think so $100, we're going to keep getting to her to donating the ACLU. money and to the Children's Hospital. And in response, you publicly demanded that Mr. Depp pay the divorce settlement directly to you instead of the charities, right? That was always the agreement, actually, is for him to pay me directly. It was not his money as per the settlement agreement to it was not give away money. and reap a tax benefit from. I said if he wants to do it and give to charity all of a sudden, then he should pay the correct amount and not try to get a big tax break for it. So effectively for his tax bracket, he should be paying double that amount to the charity directly. And if he wanted to pay the charity directly, he could. He could do that was fine with me, but he would need huh. to pay the adjusted amount. Ultimately, the rest of the $7 million divorce settlement was paid directly to you, right? Over time, yes. And Mr. Depp didn't end up paying the rest of the $7 million divorce settlement directly to the charities you identified. That is correct. He paid them you, installments to me. You stopped that from happening, didn't you? Yes. I don't understand what your question is. I'm sorry. You stopped <laughs> Mr. Depp from paying the charities that directly. you had named directly. Yes. That is incorrect. I said, if you want to pay the charities directly, pay the adjusted pay amount. Double or pay as per our agreement in the settlement or in the divorce. So you stopped As per it. our agreement. You also and publicly- And he chose to do the former, not the latter. I mean, the other way around. I gave him a choice. You also publicly stated that the $7 right. million dollar divorce settlement should be paid to the charities immediately in full, right? If he wanted to pay it in the way that he was suggesting, yes. And, and you said publicly that the payments to the charities should not be drawn out over many years, right? I said that I don't I don't recall the exact words that I used, but basically that he shouldn't use this as an op, a novel interest in getting a tax break. That if he wanted to do getting that and break. not pay me the settlement, that was fine. But he would have to pay the adjusted amount and not. She's make She's very involved you know, in the tax a, side of a this. Commitment he would not fulfill or try to avoid. Very his involved away. in the tax side of this, and that's because you wanted the entire world to think that you were donating every penny of the $7 million divorce settlement as soon as he received it ding, ding, from ding. Mr. Depp. Isn't ah, that right? Ding, ding. No, I was going to be receiving it in installments and I would be paying in installments the donations. She's gone into kind of lecture. In fact, you released a statement in response to Mr. Depp's $100,000 donations to the ACLU and CHLA, didn't you? I don't recall. Oh, let's, let's we have that. Let's see recollection. We have that please here pull for up us. Plaintiff's Exhibit 1260. We have it right here from CHLA. Let's just do that then. I'm excited an to see it. article entitled Amber Heard and Johnny Depp Row Over Divorce Donations. And if I could direct your attention to where it I says, have, 
I talked about that a little second page um, on social Her media. spokeswoman responded in today. a statement. The language objection, that follows the statement you objection, released. Objection, hearsay, right. spokeswoman. It's not her. Right. A spokesperson is an, an exception, agent. Your Honor. Oh, now we're going to sidebar. Ms. Bredehoff, objection, hearsay, spokeswoman. That's not her. The court, all right. Ms. Vasquez, spokeswoman is an exception, Your Honor. The court, do you want to come forward? The court said, if it's a spokesperson, that's a speaking agent, right? It's in the name, Elaine. Ms. Vasquez, speaking agent. The court says, exception. Ms. Vasquez, right. Representative capacity. The court, not an agent. Now we have an issue with the agent laying foundation. This is a spokesperson speaking, somebody who's speaking for her. Ms. Bredehoff, I think she has to ask if, in fact, she recognizes that and if, in fact, the spokeswoman. Ms. Vasquez, I'll get into that. So now Elaine is being like, she has to lay foundation for it. And Vasquez is like, okay, I can back up and get into it. Ms. Bredehoff, she started reading the statement out loud to the jury. Ms. Vasquez, I was trying to lay the foundation. The court, you were reading the statement. She's right. If you want to lay the foundation, that's fine. Ms. Bredehoff, thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. You released a statement. Your Honor, may we approach again? Okay. <laughs> it seems like Elaine didn't agree with the ruling because it seemed like the ruling went in 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 uh, Camille Vasquez's favor. And then she's like, can we approach again? Damn. Um, by Ms. Vasquez, you released a statement. Your Honor, may we approach again? Ah! The court, you didn't get two words out that time. <laughs> and this is dealing with the exhibits. Um, the court, they provided them in cross-examination. Bretta Hoff, they have, they have to give us hard copies. Ms. Vasquez, oh, I apologize. The court, yes, give them hard, hard copies. Ms. Bretta Hoff, give me a chance to look at it. Ms. Vasquez said, I agree, I apologize, thank you. I'll just hand you a copy. I'll just hand you a copy. She won, she won it again. That's exactly what I said. That's it. That is exactly what you said, Camille. Bretta Hoff, pay attention. We're all moving. We're moving quicker. My sir, um, your Honor, Maybe. they gave me a redacted, but I don't have the unredacted to be able to see the full document. I plan to admit it or ask that it be admitted in redacted form. I'm taking away any hearsay, and I'm just trying to lay the foundation. But, but this is a statement she released through a spokesperson. How would I know whether there's more to it that shouldn't be redacted, Your Honor, if I don't see the full document? Because what you can see, if there's anything you can see that needs to be redacted, then what you can see might also need to be redacted. But you can see that on the non-redacted because you can see the non-redacted. How do I know if I can't see the redacted if more needs to be redacted? Look at the more Your Honor, that is the witness not can redacted. Your Honor, testify as to whether this is a full statement or not. The, the witness can't. Do, we, we have the right to be able to see the document. Right. Do you have the document that's not redacted? We can pull it up on our computers. Okay. Just give us a moment, Your Honor. Go to the interwebs, Elaine. I can represent this is the full statement that's reported. Give her an opportunity to look at the unredacted one. Here's LawTube in the corner hanging out. Hello, LawTube. It might, it's kind of a ridiculous statement saying, I don't know if more needs to be redacted. Read what's not redacted and then decide. So the can next. we have a copy so. of this? Yeah, I mean, you, you can get a copy of that. Uh, after court later later yes. don't okay. the legal teams right. already I mean, have the I redacted think she should be giving no. us copies of the full well i understand but we'll we'll take care of that but okay as of um, right now can Colleen? we can you but i have an objection because of uh there's some quotation marks missing okay come forward <sighs> the court's like elaine we can deal with this later. And Elaine's like, oh no, we're going to deal with it now. We know it's getting late in the day. We can see the sun starting to hit in there. We are almost at five o'clock. So I guess now I need a copy of the unredacted. Where are the redactions? And then they're arguing about the redactions and what should and shouldn't be redacted. So everyone's on the same page. Okay. You spoke about donating your divorce settlement on a Danish TV show, correct? Oh, there we go to the Danish uh, TV show. I believe I said I had... Um, this is, I, I believe I said I donated it to charity, but it was already printed or already it was already printed, commented on and stated in the press. I had already released that information in the press. There was I think also I just confirmed it on a that show. Non -disclosure you appeared on portion. a show called RTL Late Night. There's a non disclosure portion. I don't of the recall it, what show it was. If we could please play Plaintiff's Exhibit 346, which is a portion of your appearance on this program. Did you see we would ask that it be moved into evidence and ask for permission to publish it. It contains, it has hearsay, it contains other communications with other individuals. Your Honor, if we may approach very briefly. 
Oh. Your Honor, it contains, it has hearsay, it contains other communications of other individuals. So now Bredehoff has found her hearsay objections. Your Honor, if we may approach briefly, sure. The court, all right, so which portion, Ms. Vasquez? It's just a question from the communi- uh, from the commentator. The court, just that portion, Ms. Vasquez, it's the question which is obviously not being offered for the truth, but that's the interview. I actually had it transcribed. The court said, thank you. I appreciate that. Ms. Vasquez said, by plan at depots, so there are no concerns and highlighted. The court, the highlighted part, that's going to be played. Ms. Vasquez, or this is the only thing that we'll be introducing. So what they're talking about is whether or not the other statements on, I think, the television show can come in other statements that aren't offered for the truth are fine. And they're saying we're not offering it for the truth. Oh, my God. Ms. Vasquez, this is the only thing we're introducing. Okay, which part is going to be played? This is the part that's going to be played. Yes. So it's just Ms. Heard asking, excuse me, it's the host asking the question. I apologize, Your Honor. It's actually, we clipped it. Okay. So the question here about the $7 million, what did you do with the money? The court, Okay. And then it's misheard speaking. I think there's one comment from the host on page four where it says, more power to you. That's something that I've never heard of. The court, more power. That's where it ends. Ms. Vasquez, I'm sorry. It keeps going after that. And that's the end of the, um, that's the end of them trying to figure out where the line ends. Ms. Bredehoff, so the host is actually speaking hearsay. No, the host is speaking. They're trying to figure out if it's hearsay or if it falls under an exception. Um, Danielle in the chat said the, I wanted nothing clip. Yes, this is exactly the, I wanted nothing clip. So the host is actually speaking hearsay. There are all kinds of accusations flying your way. And then people were saying, this is all about money. And then indiscernible. It's also hearsay, your honor, within that. Ms. Vasquez, it's a question, your honor. And we're obviously saying it's not being offered for the truth. The court said yes, which is an exception to hearsay. <sighs> Miss Vasquez, that's exactly what Miss Hurt is alleging here. The court, that's what she said. Okay, I'll overrule the objection. I'll allow that portion. This is the end of this day. This is the end of this day. Then they get into the TV show clip, and I wanted nothing. And then we start getting into the beginning of pledged versus donated. Public you need them to be able to hear and you. Published to the jury, plaintiff's exhibit 346. If Amber Heard loses, do you think PR will say it's due to men on the jury? And I think the, and PR will say it's sexist. And there were accusations uh, and flying your way when you said all was this. Held and out. then there was a divorce settlement. You got $7 million. People were saying this is all about the money. But then you did something that uh, twisted that whole argument. What did you do with that money? Seven million dollars in total was donated to. I split it between the ACLU and Children's Hospital of Los Angeles. ACLU is a human rights organization. Sorry, ACLU uh, is a prominent um, uh, organization, nonprofit organization in the United States. Yeah. It's called the American right. Civil Liberties Union, and they work on behalf of marginalized communities uh, on the ground and the legislative reform. Right. And well, more power to you because that's that's something that I've never I heard. I wanted of. nothing. Was donated. I wanted nothing. Was this donated. interview was in October of 2018, right, Miss Heard? I don't recall when it was. It was in 2018, right, Miss Heard? I don't remember when this was done. This was after you had received the full seven million dollars of your divorce settlement for Mr. Depp, wasn't it? Again, without knowing when it was recorded, I have no idea. The $7 million divorce settlement was paid to you in full by February of 2018, right? That's correct. She's trying so to reframe to and not just answer the yes or no. But this was before Mr. Depp sued being... you for defamation, correct? She's not being that spicy. Yes, that's correct. Spicy. He didn't sue you until after the op-ed came out in December of 2018, right? He sued me in 2019. And the op-ed came out in December of 2018. That is correct. So in October of 2018, you had received your entire $7 million divorce settlement. You would that, agree with me. That is correct. Oh. And you hadn't yet been so sued by Mr. Depp. You waited. This is a... Uh, you waited to October, write the op-ed correct. until after you got paid in so full. In this October 2018 interview, you said that you had, quote, donated, end quote, your entire divorce settlement to charity, 
right? That's correct. And in fact, your exact words were, quote, 7 million in total was donated to, yep. I split it between the ACLU and the Children's Hospital of Los Angeles. And pointing out that she right? is- that's correct. I made that statement as soon as I got a divorce and we reached the settlement. That's when I pledged it right then. And you say this because she not you, quote, wanted nothing, end quote. That is correct. But you hadn't donated your entire, entire $7 million settlement to charity at that point, had you? Bingo. That's incorrect. Wh- what? Sitting here today, Ms. Hurd, you still haven't donated the $7 million <sighs> divorce settlement to charity. Isn't that right? Incorrect. I pledged the entirety no. of the settlement, hey, seven million of charity, and I, I intend to fulfill those obligations. That's not my question. Paid, paid, Please. not pledged. What was Try your to question? answer my question. <laughs> Sitting here today, you have not donated yes, this is gonna get seven spicy. million dollars. Donated, not pledged. Donated have the seven million not. dollars divorce settlement to charity. I use pledge and donation synonymous. With one another. They are I the don't, Miss Hurd. But I don't. Stop I looking don't at the jury, Miss Hurd. That's how donations are paid. Miss Hurd, no. respectfully, that's not my question. As of today, it, you have not paid $3.5 oh, million dollars of your own money to the ACLU. Yes or no? I have not yet. And as of today, you have not paid $3.5 million of your own money oh. to the Children's Hospital of Los Angeles. Correct. I have not yet. Johnny sued me. So as of today, <laughs> it's Johnny's fault, you y'all. You have not donated. It's Johnny's fault, y'all. Paid seven million dollars of your divorce settlement to charity, right? I have not been able to fulfill those uh, those uh, obligations yet. She's <laughs> not going to say I didn't pay it. And that's because you did want something, didn't you? I didn't want anything, Almost and I didn't get like anything. You wanted me. Mr. Depp's money. Didn't get it, wasn't interested in it. Looking at the I jury. love Johnny, that's why I was with him. You wanted to be seen, excuse me, as a noble victim of domestic violence. I have you? never, never wanted to be seen as a victim. <laughs> Nor have you, I ever called myself one. Oh, shit. You testified under oath that, quote, <sighs> the entirety of your divorce settlement <sighs> was donated to charity, end quote, didn't you? That's correct. I pledged the entirety. No. No. <clears throat> Ms. Heard. No. My questions. Mm. Your counsel will have time to redirect you. My after. questions. Get it, Camille. You testified under oath, quote, the entirety of your divorce settlement was donated. Camille's tone to charity has shifted. That it's is correct. I pledged the entirety. No. I'm going to move to strike everything after yes. Yep. Uh, all right. It's non-responsive. Ooh, turn on your mic, Elaine. No. Elaine, turn on your mic. Miss Hurt. This uh, is really it, inappropriate. Oh, I, this is I'll not appropriate. I'll sustain the objection and we'll just move forward. Thank Let's you. move forward. This is Next not appropriate question. at all. Under oath, that statement wasn't true, was it, Miss Hurd? Let for Elaine. I'm sorry, I don't follow your question. <laughs> you testified under <laughs> oath. Fuck quote, you, don't. The entirety of my divorce settlement was donated They're never going to gonna charity, let this go. End quote. And they shouldn't. That statement wasn't true. They shouldn't let it go. It is true. I pledged the entirety to charity. The statement. When you say you buy a house, you don't pay Ms. for the Heard, entire house Heard, at one time. You pay I'm over not time. The que- no Heard. question Next pending, Miss Heard. No question. That statement isn't true pending. today. As you sit here today, is it? It is true. I pledged the entirety. But you didn't charity. donate it. But you didn't pay it. Unfortunately. You didn't donate it. It's a yes or no. I haven't been able to obligate, I mean, to fulfill those So that's a no, right, Miss Heard? I, am, I made the pledge. I want to be very clear. I pledged the entirety. I haven't been able to fulfill those pledges because I've been sued. You had all of the $7 million before you got for 13 sued. months before Mr. Depp good, sued you and you chose cross. not to pay it to the charities good cross. you pledged it to. Is good that cross. cross. I disagree with your characterization of that. Here's the thing. She got the entirety of the divorce settlement before she wrote the op-ed, before she was sued. And this is timing that was not clear to me Thank before you. this cross. She got the entirety of the divorce settlement and she keeps saying, I didn't pay it because I got sued. I didn't pay it because I got sued. Well, actually, no, you got the entirety of the settlement. Then you wrote the op-ed after you got paid. This is a then you third got sued. witness statement that you submitted in the UK action, right, Ms. Heard? Correct. And this statement was made under oath. Boom, true? roasted. That is true. I'm directing your attention to the last page of that statement. 
That's your signature, right? Yes, it is. So you made the sworn statement on February 26, 2020. That's correct. And directing your attention to paragraph four. This cross is so much more effective than yelling at people. Quote, I remained financially independent from him the whole time we were together. And the entire amount of my divorce settlement was donated to charity. End quote. That is correct. Did I read that correctly? Yes, you did. The him you were referring to is Mr. Depp. That is correct. She's going to keep saying it was pledged, not paid. Most of the money that was donated to the ACLU and CHLA in your name came from someone else. Isn't that right? I don't know what you mean by most of. Well, at least $500,000 that was donated to the ACLU in your name wasn't paid by you, right? Uh, I believe Elon made a donation in my honor on one one of the years. And it didn't come out of your $7 million divorce settlement, right? No, nor did it count towards my pledge. Uh, Yes, actually it did. Didn't you hear the ACLU's testimony? And at least $500,000 that was donated to the Children's Mm -hmm. Hospital of Los Angeles in your name wasn't paid by you either. Right, those were made at the same time. And it didn't come out of your $7 million divorce settlement. Nor did it count to my 3.5 obligation. Those $500,000 payments came from your new boyfriend, Elon Musk, right? Uh, I don't know if he was a new boyfriend at the time. (laughs) You got him to pay part of what you promised to these two charities, didn't you? Incorrect. Because you wanted to keep at least some of the $7 million divorce settlement for yourself, right? You're very wrong about that. Okay. I think this, if it's you're on the break, break this for is the a day. good break point. point. Okay, that's okay. fine. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we'll stop here for the evening. Remember tonight, oh. do not do any outside research and do not discuss the case oh. with anybody. I know these days are a little longer, and I appreciate your patience and uh, your in your uh, taking care of everything here please take care of yourself tonight okay and we'll see you in the morning at 9 a.m judge a you're the real mvp i mean i don't agree with all of your hearsay rulings but truly this judge is the real mvp